kingdom, yeah. I'm gonna build it up one brick at a time. Ain't got no time to rewind. I'm putting in work, double up to my grind. This is for the kingdom, yeah. I'm gonna build it up one brick at a time. Ain't got no time to rewind. I'm putting in work, double up to my grind. Why do you aim small? So 
purpose, the strategies to learn the beast. Homeless is dull, there's a time when to keep the peace. God's battle axe, even y'all keep the peace. 40 acres of mule, that reparations piece. What if we all embody, being one body? Tulsa, black wall street is filled with body. I am Malcolm X, we all Marcus Garvey. Hello, Halle Selassie, the whole lot of daddy. I am a highest knight, me and Yahoo's army. Yahweh, it's Yah's way, whichever route we going. For a future, history just might be tarnished. After darkness, there just might be some parents mourning. Think upon it, we the pawns that they feast upon. If we the kings and queens that swords gotta be drawn. Wake up, Hebrews, the unity is needed more. Fifth up, revolution. So in yeah. the tower, anything can happen. I know that the storm is raging now. Tomorrow will be calm. Propaganda, be silent no more. We ain't scared of your Miranda. Nah. Call us by our name. It don't seem like you can handle it. Your sister, we dismantle it. We done searched over the land and turned out you all scandalous. Nah. Overthrow it all in the spirit to be corner like an overthrown bar with no receiver. It's a revolution started in our mind. That's really televised. Now the world can see the truth. Out the box, they tell it lies. No flag, warning shots, no blood. False flag, stars, balance, waving. We like bye bye. With our wooden planks, we gon' carry on. If the ball in our hands blown, we gon' carry it home. My it brother's home. modern day Christmas addict. Uh. Going home, partying, talking, reaper, democratic. He the nurse, the people cry, who also diplomatic. Yeah, anything can happen now. It's the fight of your life, and we ain't talking Don't no back now. The tower. Anything can happen. I know that the storm is raging now. Tomorrow will be calm. But it's gonna take a revolution. A revolution. It's gonna take a revolution. A revolution. All we ever wanted was restitution. So wake up, we are stronger with more than one. Second legs in us, our freedom has just begun. The kingdom is here, you better take it. Came a long way from them slave ships. We don't care about them blue hunting. We treasure hunting. Don't throw in the tower. People don't cover this in Christianity, but the Bible actually foretells of the recolonization and invasion of the land of the Bantu people by Gog and Magog's army. Through covert and strategic methods, the biblical enemies of the Bantu Israelite people are setting up a Trojan horse scenario right now in Sub-Saharan Africa. The Bible warns the Bantu Israelites in the book of Ezekiel to prepare for this coming invasion to be on guard and for us to assemble together. But millions of people, including Israelites, will be distracted by the cares of this world to see what impending doom is coming to the world. From beyond the Caucasus Mountains, Eastern Europe, the Black Sea, the Caspian Sea, and Central Asia, the descendants of Meshach, Gomer, Togomov, and Magog are aligning themselves secretly with the descendants of the real Persians, Kushites, and the real Libyan Puttites. 
This is not something for the Bantu people in Sub-Saharan Africa to take lightly, for they are the true Israelites dwelling in the real land of Canaan. The dry bones prophecy of Israel is also happening right now as the African diaspora are returning to Sub-Saharan Africa, the true land of Canaan, and not modern-day Israel, the land of the Neanderthal Horites in Esau. Hebrews to Negroes 3, Sound the Alarm, the movie. Coming winter 2023 to Hebrews to Negroes TV.com and H2NTV.com. Not going to make the same mistake twice. Shalom, everybody. How y'all doing, family? Uh, man, welcome to the platform again, Off Limits, which is a special edition. As you can see, we're much earlier today at 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So welcome, 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 and blessings to all of you. Peace and blessings. And so I appreciate all of you for coming on the platform. Um, of course, I got my sidekicks. You know what I'm saying? I'm all for my sidekick, so please, when y'all get on, call me. A sidekick as well, you know. So we got Jay Lutch, we got your Pac, you um, off limits. When nothing is off limits, as you can see, it's going down. Nothing is off limits. So Jay Lutch, what you say? Hey, Shalom, fam. How y'all doing? Uh, always a blessing to be in the house, man. Talk to the people. Have uh, be part of the great conversation that's coming about, man, and uh, the change that's happening in the world. Uh, praise the most high man for us to be a part of it to be awakened in this time period so that we can see how it's all going down get your popcorn family it's, it's, it's gonna be a ride fam you know sit back and let the most high do what he do fam that's that's it that's all i got q i know q uh -oh. Uh -oh. yeah 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 i'm like they hating today the i'm frozen like <laughs> am i frozen you good now, you good. <laughs> shalom, 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 family. I praise to the most high for what they say in, uh, in church, for my life, health, and strength. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> 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 to be here today, it's some exciting times that we are in today and goes to show you how real this Bible is. And of course, I'm with my with my brothers. I'm with my, my kid, brother. My you know what I'm saying? <laughs> I'm with I'm with my sidekicks. <laughs> <laughs> she didn't even saw right saying it. <laughs> you didn't even do it. You didn't do it, Jay Lush. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. My fault. Yeah, my you fault. didn't. My, my, my sidekicks. You know what I'm saying? But I, I I'm always look at myself as a servant. Sorry, I I, I yeah. couldn't say it like that. Yeah. Well, you know, we serve each other. Yeah, time. like what you talking about? We do. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, but yeah. Yo, know, it's, 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 it's great. It's great. We have, it's a great show. Y'all already know this is a hot topic, hot topic in the world today. Hey, it must go to the four corners and that's what we're here for. We're getting it out to these corners and Hey, grab your popcorn. Like my brother said, a butter kettle is, is, is hot. It's hot. Just make sure it's kosher. <laughs> Don't be having no uh <laughs> no pork salt over there. You know what I'm pork <laughs> salt. You ain't lying though. Hey, we just yeah. play, but um, man, y'all <laughs> welcome. And not only that, we have a special guest tonight. Also, we got a Shonda at large. I had so apologized that I couldn't be on her platform last night. Um, but you know, I was like, you know what? I'm gonna pay her back. You know, since Ron, we was already scheduled to have Ron tonight, and so. I was like, what better way just to bring her on? We can knock two birds out with one stone. I make sure that I say that idiom correctly. Um, yeah, so we knocked two birds out with one stone. So I invited her to come on just in case, since she didn't have the opportunity to ask certain questions, since I'll have Ron tonight, I say, hey, just come on tonight, you know what I'm saying, and help me do this thing. So really, she's the co-host tonight. So let's go ahead and welcome Ashonda on, and then we'll bring the man of the hour on here as well. Ashonda, hey, welcome to the platform. It's always great to see your lovely smile and your spirit. Man, welcome to the platform as always. Introduce yourself to the people and then, hey, take it from there. All right, shalom, shalom. Um, so glad to be here. Thank y'all so much for the invite. This is an honor. Uh, Brother Lord, as you know, me and you go way back. 
Um, and I appreciate the panel. Thank you all so much for having me on tonight. Want to give a shout out to Shonda at large. Fam up in the building, uh, throw up them fire emojis. Love that y'all in the building supporting the work. Uh, no shout out definitely that. to Brother Ron Dalton, who is going to be on tonight. Just um, so honored to have the privilege to come before y'all speak. And also a special shout out to my little cousin in South Florida, uh, Damani, who has been uh, asking about us as Israel. And he's in the building tonight listening. So shout out to you, Damani. Much love to all of you. Man, all praises. But you know what? Just you saying that alone makes me smile because that's what the work is all about. Because you said he's been asking. And to yeah. know that you're so close to this situation through me and through Ron and just through the Ruach, the way it's been guiding everyone. Because when you think about it, although there's millions of us waking up, we're still a small knit community. You see what I'm saying? And we're all somewhat attached to each other, whether we like it or not. Yes. And the most High's glory in his plan and his name is going to go out whether we like it or not. Right. Mm -hmm. And so when we see a move of the most High is, is, is moving, we have to understand what it looks like. And we believe this is it. And this is one part of it. You know, there's many bodies. There's many members, rather many members, but one body. And we're all just doing our part to fulfill this whole thing. And so, man, welcome, everybody. So. I don't know if you have the article, but let's go ahead and bring Ron Dalton in, the man of the hour. I don't really need to introduce him. He done graced this platform so many times. One of my best friends. Right. Um, we, we've been riding this thing for a while. Author of Hebrews to Negroes, the films, the books, uh, the documentaries. I mean, you can name it. Uh, they call him the human encyclopedia. Um, I can say he's well respected, but also one of the most hated man in the world too um but you know the scripture talks about they it's not him they hate it's the most high they hate because he brings his word so i'm sure he wears it with a badge of honor so ron man welcome again welcome 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 again they done made you the man of the hour again but you know that's the most high is doing his thing right it's like they can't help it and you have to kind of imagine that they can't sleep at night and i can imagine if i was them too you know, and the kind of authority I have in this earth and to know that perhaps maybe it's coming short, um, I probably wouldn't sleep either. So go ahead and address the people and then we'll go ahead and address the uh, the article. Um, I'm just uh, I'm just here to chime in and say what I got to say and and go to bed because it's, it's past midnight here in South Africa. So. <laughs> you know, your bedtime yeah. is about 3 a.m. You know, I know that. No. <laughs> <laughs> so the kids are yeah. the, how the kids sleeping? How they doing? How's the wife? No, they sleeping. They sleeping right next to me right now. You know, I, I gotta it. bring this up. You know, I, and you know, I've been rolling with you for a while, and I thought you had the record, man, for the amount of kids. You know, what I'm saying as far as everyone that I've met, and I had to think about it. You know, Ashonda seen. You know, she kind of got you beat, bro. <laughs> 10, bro. She got 10 on her own. So what you going to do about that? I'm not going to do nothing. I'm not doing nothing. <laughs> do about it. I have yeah. passed the porch to you. <laughs> yeah. Ashonda, we, we just need two more and then you have the entire tribe. You, you know? got them. You got them. Me and my husband. 12. <laughs> okay. It's the same plan. It's the same plan. But... <laughs> I don't know if uh, you have the article, uh, your pa, because um, I have forgot to even send it to bring it to you. But uh, recently, um, there was an article that was posted on the Jerusalem um, Post, an opinion piece by a man named Walter Block, I believe. Um, Ashanti, you did an amazing video highlighting this person uh, who wrote the opinion piece. Excellent video. I mean, I couldn't believe you did the research that quick. I mean, that, that was amazing. And it was very thorough in how you brought it in. And the question, and I put the question in the poll of my community tab as to whether that's something Ron should do. And believe it or not, I'm kind of torn about it, right? I'm kind of torn about the decision. In one hand, it's like, no. But in the other hand, it's like, should we make an example of this person? Um, you see what I'm saying? So I'm kind of torn in between that. But then it's like, we know we don't need any validation, right? So, sis, I'm going to give you the platform to maybe review uh, the article as you see it here. 
and then we'll ask Ron Dalton. You know, we'll go with the flow, and then you can ask Ron Dalton. Perhaps maybe what you may have wanted to ask me last night, but it's no better thing than to have the horse himself here, so you can hear from the horse's mouth. So Absolutely. there you go. All right. Well, um, you know this this article that was presented by the Jerusalem Post. Um, this is one of uh, you know their their more reputable um, uh, versions of media. And so this is not a small matter when you talk about, even if it's an opinion article, it's not a small matter when you're talking about um, addressing the whole Hebrews to Negro uh, book documentary. It's a, it's a shot that was fired, in my opinion, towards the entire community of Israel. And so when I looked at this article, um, I wanted to kind of weigh the balances and see how he was positioning himself. So yes, this is about um, Harold Block's opinions. Harold Block is um, a professor at Loyola University. And these are his opinions. Um, he deals with economics. Uh, and so he's positioning himself as, according to the article, and y'all can scroll down in the article and we can take a look at it. It says, first says, anti-Semitic books shouldn't be banned, but debated. So we can scroll down in the article and see some of his position. And I definitely would love to ask uh, specifically uh, of Brother Ron, these claims that are being made. I did make it very clear that I saw the documentary. I did not read the books. Um, we were actually listening to the audio book, my husband and I, but the documentary we watched as a family. Excellent work, by the way, my brother, excellent work. Um, but there are certain claims that he makes. And so I would like to take them point by point and get your um, get your thoughts on these these allegations, essentially, that were made by Harold Block. So we can scroll down. We can take them one at a time. What's this book all about? Uh, here are some of its claims. He says, first, that Hebrews to Negro says that present day Jews are imposters. They have absconded with and undermined the religious heritage of Africans and African Americans. Via a vast amount of misinformation, these Jews have miseducated Black people, hiding from them their actual identity. Now, before you answer, um, I want to deal specifically with the Hebrews to Negroes projects in the book is what his uh, focus is on. He didn't mention the documentary, but uh, being that you're the author of the book, how would you answer this claim that this is one of the claims that uh, or allegations that's being lodged against you in terms of your material? Uh, well, um, they are imposters and they, they're not the true Israelites. Um, you can't say that you're the true Jews and, and all that stuff um, when you're not. If you, I mean, <laughs> that's like somebody that looks like Michael Jordan is saying, I'm Michael Jordan. People believe in him uh, until the real Michael Jordan says, no, this guy is an imposter. He's, 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 he's trying to be me. So the Jews are imposters and they have um, uh, contributed to trying to hide the information uh, that we are the true Israelites because they control the, um, the media and they control a lot of the stuff that we see and and they influence the Christian church uh, in purporting to lie because you look at white Jesus, you look at the Jews, they're both white. And so you start to, you start to put, you, you or at least when you're young and you don't have any understanding, you, you say, okay, well, the Jews are white, Jesus is white. So, they must be the real Jews, and they and they are in, in the, and they and they are in the land of, of what the, the media tells us is the is the land of Israel. So then you're like, and they speak Hebrew. So then you're thinking like, well, I mean, any person that doesn't um, have a lot of understanding into this research, and they're going to say, well, I don't speak Hebrew, and uh, people in Africa don't speak Hebrew, and they're in the land of Israel and Jesus is white, they're going to start saying, what? All, all these things point to the fact that they are the real Israelites, but, um, you know, my books and the movies um, prove that to be false. Uh, and they have miseducated black people um, because they, they control marketing, advertising, the media, uh, and if they control the media, then they can show us uh, slave movies every year and they can produce them the jews can which they do and and they're not going to produce any movies that prove that we are the descendants of the israelites because they want to only do those movies for themselves and and put people in um in the uh, roster of these movies that are white you know egypt you know uh exodus gods and kings and all these different movies so yeah they are they are miseducating um, black people in the whole world and 
Yes, they are imposters, and and I was I, I would say that over and over again. Yep. Well, thank you so much uh, for your explanation. I, I I would say that the majority of us as Israelites um, agree, and this is not necessarily uh, an opinionated statement. There is a scripture to validate uh, this viewpoint. Revelation two nine and three nine will be one of the main scriptures that we can attest to, as well as Luke twenty one twenty four, which I delved into yesterday. Um, but in terms of how you would say that your book has represented this uh, this claim, would you say your book itself focuses on this idea of them being uh, a converted group of people? Uh, aside from your own uh, research standpoint, would you say your book communicates that heavily or would that be uh, a minority view in terms of your book and the majority focus in terms of showing black people who our, 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 our real identity is? Yeah, the book the book um, proves that they are converts um, and that they're not the real Israelites, and it shows who are the real Israelites who who do have connections to the real Israelites. And the movie does too, you know, and the, and all the teachings that I do on H two and TV. So yeah, it's it's in a, it's in all everything that I teach. I prove that they are converts and they are not of the lineage of Shem. Okay. Okay. Very good. So we're going to move on to the next point. It says there's a Jewish conspiracy to oppress and defraud the black community. The former has robbed the latter of vast wealth through surreptitious means. Would you say that that is an accurate statement represented in your book? You are on, on yeah. mute. Yeah. Slavery, uh, the Jewish people, they, they were shareholders or they were heavily invested well, they, they were invested in the slave trades, like the Dutch West Indian Company, the Dutch West uh, East Indian Company. Um, slavery helped build Wall Street and, and um, you know, and the Dow Jones and all these things. And slavery helped uh, uh, white people in America obtain wealth um, because of the free labor, the free labor that they had and the amount of land that they were able to get and a lot of the different perks that they got because they were the conquerors they were the ones that that conquered the land of america they put put people to work as slaves you know i mean they 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 amassed a lot of wealth uh, from america it, through 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 the means of the, the indigenous people in america and then the negro and this is also in the caribbean and they also you know they're people that have the same genetics as them they also colonized Africa um, and stole a lot of the wealth out of Africa and, and are still, you know, exporting Africa for their own personal gain, not just human trafficking. But um, in regards to um, even now, you'll see that the banks, um, the banks, because they control the banks in America, the IMF, the Federal Reserve Bank, the, the World Bank, they control these banks. And so they control uh you know who what community gets easy access to loans for houses businesses uh different things of that nature and you know it's this is the european jewish community that take part in in these things and then even in, even in africa the the jews own a lot of the banks um and if you research the 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 rich south africans um, you'll see that a lot of them are Jewish and they come from uh, like the area of Lithuania and in the surrounding countries, you know, so they so they control the banks, then they can control the interest rates that they give to white people when they act when they when they apply for loans and they can control the interest rates for black people, um, which is higher than white people um, for those that get loans or they can just deny a lot of black people from getting loans to to build houses and do things in inside the you know cities like Johannesburg, Pretoria, and Cape Town, uh, and Durban. Uh, so, you know they, they you know it's 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 not a rocket science that they have um, accumulated and robbed a lot of the wealth um, from from us um, from the land. Also, the also us, our bodies that you know being tools of the way they can make money. And then also the fruit of our, our labor and our hands also contributes to them making a vast amount of wealth. So that statement is true. You look at the Jewish community, you look at the black community, 
you're going to see a big difference, um, a big difference. You're going to see those that are working, those that are consuming, and those that own all the businesses and make all the rules and control the marketing and advertising. They control the narrative. They control a lot of a lot of the a lot of the aspects, which you know ties into economics. So, yep, that's true too. Let me land back on that uh, with you, uh, uh, assist. Mm -hmm. We know that the scripture talks about when the wicked are in charge, the people are just miserable. They unhappy. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? Yes. And we know if the righteous are ruling, then there's happiness. There's just peace. Period. So when you look at who's ruling right now, if you own everything and you pretty much run the world then if you are the people of the book then everyone should be happy everyone should at least have some semblance of peace but you say you're the people of the book but when people say you own everything you get offended why right. get offended the right. right thing to do is be fair and reasonable to everyone on earth you're supposed to be the light of the earth you're supposed to be the light on the hill but you get upset when people say the way you're ruling and the things that you are doing to people, instead of listening to the people that are being oppressed, instead what you do, you try to shut them up. Well, what I observe is that that's done specifically to us. Right. right? Absolutely. So if, if they want to speak about the, the realities of how they control uh, the economy, how they control media, anything that they control within their own group, whether they're secular or whether they're religious observers, it's perfectly fine. But the minute we say that this is exactly what you're doing and we can re-verbatim their words, then it becomes quote unquote anti-Semitism. I don't understand that. Right. Uh, but this is a personal observation. Uh, I lived in Boca Raton, Florida, and I watched uh, this entire community uh, flourish in wealth and have their uh, separate communities with high HOA fees, but very low cost and mortgages for themselves. Um, and I, I watched them go to the Kabbalah Center and I couldn't understand because I was so um, entrenched in uh, Christianity at that time. And we were supposed to be witnessing to God's chosen people. I couldn't understand how they were God's chosen people. But at the same time, they didn't believe they were atheists or they were believing in Jewish mysticism. So I didn't understand that at all. But uh, now by the grace of the most high, he's putting the puzzle pieces together. So I could definitely agree that our wealth um, has been suppressed by this group of people to this day who have strong armed us through, uh, through a lot of tactics. I'll just put it that way. Right. I agree. Um, Brother Ron, let's continue on with this third point. It says hidden by historians. Jews were in large part involved in the transatlantic slave trade, which facilitated the slavery of black people. It is time, it is past time that their responsibility for this bondage and oppression of blacks be publicized. Now, before you answer this question, if you agree that this is something that you were stipulating in your book, can you give any examples of specific people that you could think of that were in, involved specifically in TAST during that time? Uh, well, they have names of Jewish owned slave ships and Jewish owned planters, which in the Caribbean, a planter was somebody that owned the plantation, uh, like the Gabay planters, G A B A Y of Jamaica, and they or a family, a Jewish family, their own plantations in Jamaica, slave plantations. Just like they had families that owned slave plantations in Suriname and Brazil and, and uh, other areas. And then those that had plantations in America, um, a lot of times they changed their last name, but Gentile names, Gentile last names in America so that you you wouldn't know if they were Jewish or not. Um, so the thing that people have to understand is that the Jews, okay, so the Jews have acknowledged um, on many videos that they did have slaves. Uh, and a slave is not somebody that signed up to be a slave. He just was made a slave against his own will. Uh, and even though Mark, well, not Mark, what's his name, Block, even though he said, like, in your video that slavery wasn't that bad, 
you know, nobody wants to be a slave. Nobody wants to be <laughs> captured and taken from one continent and then and then put on the ship and taken to another continent to be chained and beat and then hung and raped and killed if you're out of order or if they just feel like doing it. You know, nobody wants to go through that um, and, and be forced to work for another uh, for another nation. Nobody nobody wants to do that because they didn't they didn't the slaves didn't say, well, what am I going to get out of it? You know, and they're going to say, well, you're going to get a, a shack and you're going to get some the leftovers of my food that I eat and you're going to be able to have kids, but your kids are going to be helped to work. Nobody's going to sign up for those kind of conditions and say, OK, well, I'll get on the ship and you could take me, you know, to America. Nobody, nobody was, was, was signed up for that. Uh, it was by force that they did this. And it was for the Jews. It was against the Torah because it says you, you should not kidnap a man and steal him. Or you should not, you know, these things are, are forbidden in the Torah to do, but they still did it, you know, killing, raping, stealing, you know, murder, adultery. These things uh, were in the Torah, but the Jews and Jews that followed the, um, the commandments, at least that's what they say, they were breaking these commandments in, in, in the slave trades. And even Europeans that were Christians coming in the name of Christ and, you know, that, that we were uncivilized, we need to be Christianized, and it's okay to, to do this to, to savages and barbarians. You no, know, they, they still they still were not following um, what the Bible says and what Christ says. Um, so when you look at the slave trades, the Jews will say that they played a small part in the slave trades. But then you have to ask yourself, okay, well, what makes you a Jew? And is you are, are you a Jew by religion, or you are a Jew by bloodline, meaning we should be able to trace things like DNA to prove these things. Because if you are a Jew by bloodline, then if you have the same common ancestral forefather, then, okay, so then if you say, I'm, a, I'm a from the tribe of Judah, and let's just say, you say your Y DNA is O. And then another guy, he says, well, I don't know who I am, I just know I'm white or Asian, and my haplogroup group is the same as yours. Oh, if the white guy that says he's a Jew or whatever person says he's a Jew says, I'm a Jew by blood, and this other guy says, well, I don't know where I come from, but I have the same DNA as you, then technically he also is a Jew because because they have the same ancestral forefather based on the haplogroup. group. Uh, just like if Lovren's got his DNA test and said E1B1A, and he's 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 from Haiti, and then a brother from the Congo, um, he's telling Lovren's like, look, I'm not an Israelite, and Lovren's like, you are an Israelite, and the Haitian brother gets his DNA test, and it says E1B1A, just like him. <laughs> so, so somebody's lying here, either the either the Congo guy just doesn't know, or Lovren's knows, and he knows that the Israelites in Sub-Saharan Africa, the Bantu people, have E1B1A, and it's a bloodline thing, then he could also say with well, confidence that brother, you may not know, but you also are an Israelite, and our DNA is the same. And he and he may tell the Congolese guy, slaves were taken from the Congo, yes, were they not? And then the Congo guy says, yes, they were taken from from the Congo, and were the, were they not taken to the Caribbean and Americas? And he will say, yes, they were. So I said, we are the same blood, we have the same bloodline, the same ancestors and forefather. I just have done the research and know that I'm an Israelite, and I'm trying to explain it to you. You may reject it. You may not believe it, but you are a, a, a Jew or you are an Israelite. So when you look at the DNA of the Ashkenazi Jews, you know, they have the same DNA as the people that did the slave trades, like the Spanish, the Portuguese, the British, the Dutch, the French, um, you know, all these different, the Germans, you know, they, they have the same DNA. So you can't sit there and say, okay, I'm a Jew. I'm from the tribe of Levi or whatever. And then you got a German guy, or you got a Dutch guy, or you got an English guy, or you got a French guy, or you got a Portuguese guy, and he says, hey, I did my DNA test, it's the same as yours. And you're a Jew. And you're from the tribe of Judah or Levi. But guess what? If my DNA is exactly the same as yours, then I'm a Jew too. You know, <laughs> and, the, and the Jewish guy can't say, oh, no, you're not, because we're looking at the same DNA. That the, the paternal habit group means that we have the same ancestral father. There's no, it's no getting around that. So when the Jews say that they, their people didn't play a part in the slave trades, 
heavily. Well, they did because the Jews are the children, mostly they're basically the children of Japheth. And, and the children of Japheth that took part in the slave trades was the Spanish, the Portuguese, the Germans, the Dutch, the French, the British, and, and, and the people in these lands today have the same DNA as the Jews. So so they so they get tripped up on whether they want to say that they're Jews by religion or by race or by ethnicity uh, or by blood. There's always a confusion in this in, in how they determine what's a Jew. So well, they were largely in part involved in the translate. Their people, their their ancestral bloodline and pedigree, yes, was largely in part involved in the slave trade of black people. What I observed months ago when all of this uh, became international was that when it came to this very point that you just brought up with the issue of DNA and the fact that how can you tell who is a quote unquote Jew based off of DNA, based off of haplogroups, that's when they started making decisions around silencing themselves and saying, we just need to just let this go. We don't need to talk about it anymore because we're giving him too much uh, airtime. We're, we're, we're talking too much about this. If we just let it go, then we're not even going to have to deal with this anymore. But it was surrounded around that particular point that you made about how do you make a distinction of the quote unquote Jew? If it's based on bloodline, then you have the same blood as a Germanic person, a person that is from Spain or Portugal, you have the same blood. So now we have a problem of making distinctions. Is it just by faith or is it by blood? So they wanted to, they, I believe in my personal opinion that they wanted to kind of bury that really quickly. So I think you made an excellent point there. Um, all right, let's go ahead and continue on. Uh, it says the Jews are greedy. Oh, Brother Lorvis, did you want to jump in real quick before I move on? No, I'm kind of good, but just this one point that you highlighted, um, Ron, I'm, I'm going to ask as if I just don't know, okay? You know, have people listening. Now, have you seen anything where they're arguing or justifying themselves being who they are, the people of the book? Is it through religion or is it mainly through ethnicity or bloodline? Which one are they, like, hiding under? Are they claiming both? Um, they're doing a little bit of both. They're doing a little bit of both. Um, and they will switch up. You know, if they say, well, you're not a Jew unless your mother is a Jew. And then you will say, well, how did the change? How did, how did you trace your lineage back to King Solomon with your mother in the Bible? Could you show me? Can you show me right now? They're gonna they're gonna stutter. They're not gonna they're not gonna know how to answer that because you cannot trace the lineage of King Solomon, King David, and Judah through the mother from you know thousands of years ago to today. And so they had to come up with something else uh, as to why that they use that claim. And then and then they'll say, oh, well, you're you're a Jew. You know, if they if, if they can't explain that, they'll say, oh, well, you're a Jew if you're a practicing the the laws and the and the and the religion of Judaism. Uh you could be a Jew if you practice these, you know, these traditions and customs. But then you can see people in America and in Africa practicing the same customs and traditions as the as the Israelites in the Bible, but they're not considered Jews or real Jews. Um, so then they will say, well, we're we're Jewish by bloodline. But then they don't know how to connect themselves uh, by blood to the ancient Israelites. Uh, they can try to use DNA and say that the Y DNA J is is the Jewish haplogroup. And then you say, well, if that's the case, then then a lot of the Arabs are Jews too, and there's a lot of black Arabs and Bedouins and people that's in India and people in East Africa that also are Jews too. Uh, and they don't know it. Uh, and you guys, we need to probably bring this out. But you know, I mean, they're confused because they don't know how to. They don't know. They don't know how how to explain why they say that they are the Israelites when we should start to pay attention to um, 
what is the history of the Israelites and going back to, to ancient Egypt and ancient Kush um, and the ancient Canaan, can you explain how uh, these black lineages or nations in the Bible um, mixed with the Israelites for so long, um, but yet you guys don't show any evidence of any uh, strong Hamitic admixture uh in in you in your in your in your dna in your bloodline so so there's a lot of there's a lot of things that they can't explain so then they you know of course they're gonna just switch up how they define what is a jew and that's what that's what you see often how convenient <laughs> when it's convenient right yeah very convenient um <laughs> i guess in a way we could switch up from being an african-american to a, <laughs> to a negro <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I'm teasing a little bit, but you know, seriously, th th this is this is the um, the hidden hand. The, these are the, uh, the the games that are played oftentimes, and when you try to pin them down exactly, there's going to be point of contention uh, with whether or not they're by the blood or they're by faith. So we got to keep hammering it away, and I love that that's what you're doing. So the next point is the Jews are greedy and have no historical connection to any land in Israel. Thus, the Jews are responsible for the oppression of Palestinians and have no proper title to any significant amount of land in that area. Again, was this point addressed in your book? And if it wasn't or was, how do you feel about it personally? Um, okay, so the, the Jews, they wanted Uganda at one point, and then they wanted, um, they wanted uh, Ethiopia. They thought about Egypt, but then they was like, nah, and then they started on on Palestine, um, and the Palestinians. Uh, that wasn't. I mean, technically, when you look at it, the Palestinians, the, the white Arabs, and the white Jews, they all came from the east. The the you have the Near East and the Far East, and they come from the east. Uh, a lot of them are connected to Central Asia, so that that land that they went to, you know, wasn't part of their bloodline. Um, um ancestral land uh so they all are imposters and invaders um to that land uh claiming to be shamanic people and they're not uh so but the jews you know i mean when you i mean if you take somebody else's land that, that's not yours then you essentially you, you're greedy or you were just a thief and just like me coming to lorvin's house and telling lorvin's to get out uh or I go to Lorvin's house and I take his bike and I take his car and then Lorvin sees his car and his bike, bike parked outside my house. And then Lorvin says, Hey, I want to take, I want to take my car back and my bike. And I tell him no, but I know that I stole it from him, but, but Lorvin is not wrong in saying, I kind of, I want my car, my car, and my bike back because he took it from me. You know, <laughs> the, the normal thing to do is we'll be like, you're right. You're right. I, I did steal it from you. You caught me. Um, Either I'm going to say you can have it back, or you're going to, we're going to have to fight over this bike and, and car that, that I took from you. But the Jews don't see it that way. And what they did, uh, they, 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 I guess to them, stealing is okay if you're stealing, stealing uh, something from a Gentile or somebody you consider to be a Gentile. I think that's in the Talmud too. That it's okay to steal from a Gentile. Boy, um, yeah, it's it's, it's it's okay. It's okay to do a lot of things to the Gentiles. Uh, you could. Man, I saw last one in there. I read it. And I said, "Wow!" I said, "I said basically, you can do what you want to a gentile. It's okay." And so even stealing. So that is so that is greed, and they don't have any connection to the land. And they are they have been oppressing the Palestinians. I think they just recently bombed uh, Palestinians, and they're in, in I think a drone or something. They got they just dropped, and some people got killed, and Palestinians are upset. You know, so when you look at you look at you know TV. You're seeing that you know Palestinians, of course, are getting killed more than the Jews are getting killed um, because of violence in that area, which also goes against the scriptures. The scriptures say that's not supposed to happen, um, but you know there's no peace in the land. So, so the, the scriptures either a, either a lie or the person that's in the land is lying, uh, or the land itself is a lie. You know because the scriptures there's supposed to be peace in the land when God brings back the children of Israel, but there hasn't been any peace. When the, when since the Jews got to the land of Palestine, so that contradicts scripture. So either the scriptures in the Bible is a lie, 
or the people there are a lie or the land is a lie you know so so yeah so they don't they don't belong there i mean their true homeland uh is in central asia and i say this all the time and i prove it in my books and movies and and, and uh future projects so yeah that's that's that's, that's what i that's what i teach now i remember having a conversation with a caucasian lady uh, a few years ago and she was telling me how she had went uh, to Europe on vacation. And I said, oh yeah? I said, which country did you go to? And she said, Israel. <laughs> and it really, really? kind of shocked me when she said that. I said, you went to Israel in, in Europe? And so I know that they have the Suez Canal, which is a man-made canal, right? And um, that gives them the access to call that particular part of the land, the quote unquote Middle East. Um, do you think that that could have that played a part in why they decided to choose that particular plot of land versus Uganda? Um, I honestly think that they chose that land because um, it was perfect for them to use that land to convince the world that that's the true land of Canaan in, in that in that land. Because to say, if they would have chose Uganda, then now you'd have been saying, okay, the land of Canaan is, is in, or the land of Israel is in Uganda, in Central Africa. And then you would have asked yourself, okay, well, if they're in, in Uganda, if this is the land of Israel, Uganda now, like they wanted it to be, then the indigenous the indigenous people in Uganda uh, were black people because we you know we know that Uganda was filled with black people before the Jews got there. Mm -hmm. So you have to ask yourself, well, who are, they, who are these black people in Uganda? Are they the Canaanites? <laughs> uh, who are they? Are they the Egyptians? Are they the Kushites? And you would have to you would have to say, well, they got to be somebody. <laughs> They gotta be somebody, and you and you could not say that the Lebanese that the, that the Lebanese people are the Canaanites. You could not say, okay, the Lebanese people today have the ancient DNA of the Phoenicians and the and the Canaanites slash Canaanites. You couldn't do that. You can only do that in in the Levant. You can only say that the Palestinians or the Lebanese people have the DNA of the ancient Phoenicians and Canaanites because you're in a land that's like desert. That's like a desert. And you're in the land where the or these white Arabs uh, came and they settled uh, the Ottoman Turks, and but that they did that if they did that in Uganda, then they will have they will have a lot of questions to ask. Like, okay, who are these black people that have been here before we got here? And it only makes sense that they would say, okay, either these black people that were here before the white people got here, either they, if they're the white people are saying that this is the, this this is the land of Israel, aka Canaan, then these Ugandans. Whether they're Nilots or Bantu, they they got to be either the Canaanites or they got to be a remnant of the Israelites that never left, and that causes a lot of problems in their in their theory uh, that they're the true Jews. So I think that they they had to choose the the desert land of Israel um, because the majority of the land of Israel uh, is a desert. It's a known fact. So that that really has that really is a problem. When you look at when you read the scriptures and you see the uh all the the attributes and descriptions of the land of canaan you can't read the bible and read the, about the land of canaan and, and then go to israel and say man this is a desert i said how can this be the land of canaan you know what happened you know so so their masterminds in deception uh and tricking us and they had to do that by, by i think by choosing that area. And I know people might be, might say, Ron, you're false. I know, I know where you're getting at with this Africa thing in the land of Canaan. And, and you know, you, now you're saying that Israel is not the real land of Canaan. But there's a lot of research um, that kind of points in a different direction. Uh, but hey, you know, we know that uh, the Horites, uh, they lived in, in caves uh in the mountains and 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 uh you know and esau left the land of canaan and moved far away from his brother and he sojourned to the land of the horites uh and he dispossessed the horites 
you know, that were there before him that were dwelling in caves. And, you know, you see a lot of Neanderthal caves in Israel, uh, not in Jordan, in Israel. And that's time, that's kind of concerning. Uh, and when you look at a lot of the ancient DNA samples of uh, ancient Israel uh, and, and on the maternal side, on the mother side, you'll see you'll see some scattered Neanderthal DNA in these ancient bones that they're digging up. But now, you know, they may say that they dug them up inside the skeleton, inside the caves or outside the caves. But nevertheless, the people that have been living in that land for the last 2000 years, they have. Uh, a, a nice number of people, um, even Homo sapiens, not Homo neanderthalus, but Homo sapiens have shown evidence of the Neanderthal DNA on the mother side. And we know that the Neanderthal DNA on the mother side is found major majorly in Europeans um, and not Africans. So there's a lot of things that, you know, there's a lot of things that, I, that I've, I'm always researching and Lawrence knows uh, because I've talked to him a lot about it, and 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 I'm gonna bring it out uh, in the next movie and the next books. Human encyclopedia, right? That's what they call you. <laughs> uh, that's that's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. Before I move on, uh, I just wanted to give um, the rest of the panel opportunity. If y'all had any questions before I, you know, continue on with my questions, if you do, feel free. Because I don't want to hog the panel at all, and I apologize if I have. No, nah, no, nah, you've been doing good, sis. Yeah, I was. No, right. <laughs> No, no, no! You, you killing it, sis. Uh, you, you good? <laughs> for real. This, this, is a, this is usually the area where I like to sit back and just listen. I do have exactly. one thought, though, uh, Ron. Um, do is there a huge majority of those people that actually believe that they are the Jews? Like you say, it was a huge percentage that actually believe that they are. Like, is there a huge to small percentage of people? who actually know what's going on in the background? Or is it just most of them just believe what their fathers have told them? Is it Africa or the, the Jews? Which one? The, the, the Jewish. The Jewish, okay. Uh, a lot of the Jews just believe what their parents told them and they don't do any research. Uh, so, you know, they they believe that they have, all, they have um, been there uh, for thousands of years, they may have left to Europe and then came back. And that's what they believe. They believe that they're from the tribe of Judah. Uh, if they don't really know, that's what they're going to tell you. Um, they're going to they're gonna say, oh, well, we're told to say that if we don't know, just say Judah. When, when asked about our tribe, you know, because a lot of times they don't know. Um, they're not going to tell you Benjamin or Levi you know, or any of that nature, you know, or Manasseh, they're always going to say Judah. Not more than any other tribe. If you ask any random Jew in anywhere in the United States of America, the majority of your answer uh, when asking them what tribe are you from, they're going to say Judah. They're going to say Judah. And that's just something that they were taught to say because people normally don't ask them these questions as to if you're a Jew, what's one of the 12 tribes do you come from? Right. And they're never going to say the 10 tribes. They're going to say Judah. The majority of them. But then how, how do they rec reconcile scriptures like Ezekiel 37 and the dry bones, the valley of the dry bones, the two sticks be put into one? Because I, I know that that's one of those scriptures that oftentimes have been ignored uh, in, in, in Christendom. Uh, Joel three is often painted uh, uh, the Valley of Decision and, and 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 the War of Armageddon as a war that's waged between Christians and the unrighteous, rather than mm -hmm. um, something that is waged uh, between the Most High uh, on behalf of His people, uh, Judah and Ephraim. So how do they how do they um, deal with that conflict when it comes to the understanding of scriptures like Ezekiel 37 and the two sticks becoming what? They deflate. <laughs> they deflate. I had a, I, I'm going to just say this real quick. I, I actually had a, I used to work in the mortgage industry and um, it's, I just, I just had came in like 20, 2014. I was fresh. You know, so I was excited. You know what I'm saying? I didn't have any history really. And 
and I, when I told him, he asked me because I was wearing something, and I was like, yeah, I'm Hebrew. He was like, how? And I was like, the 12 tribes, he said, it's only one. So when you ask that question, you know, how do they how do they do the two sticks become one? They really, he believed, or you know, whoever taught him, that it was only one. And what Ron said, it was Judah. He, he said, it's only one now, it's Judah. And I was like, well, what about the other? He said, they don't exist anymore. This is what he told me. I mean, he was the guy, he, he wore the thing to work and everything. So that's what they really believe. Like it's only one and no, there's nobody else but the one, you know? <laughs> so that's, that's what I got. And you know, it's crazy. I wanted to address this real fast too. Cause when you look at the occult world, the esoterics, so like the occult world, everything is usually in duality, right? And Hasatan always do the opposite. So when you look at, they've been deceived and we've been deceived. But it's the opposite. We've been deceived that we're not the people, and they've been deceived that they are the people. You see the duality. You see the uh, the opposite. That's how you know a lot of times the adversary is part of that, because it's going to be the total opposite of what the Most High has said. So, in one hand, they convinced us you're not the people of the book, and we literally run with it. And then they're telling them they're the people of the book, and they ran with it. But I'm gonna tell you one thing: it's a perfect setup. And the most I knew that was going to happen. So in these last days, when he began to pour his spirit on all flesh and these truths become, become to be uncovered. And then he said, the Sabbath is a sign that you are his people. And those are going to be some people that's going to start keeping the Sabbath, keeping the laws. Now you see what's going on. They ain't keeping the laws. They don't even care. This man, Walter Block, he's an atheist, or at least has been written about he's an atheist. But uh, it, I'm sorry, he's a devout, devout atheist. atheist. <laughs> and at the same breath, saying that we the people of the book, those two don't square. That's a confused spirit. We're not going to say we're atheists, and then also say we're the people of the book. It doesn't make any sense. So you can start, you can start to see the separation. You see what I'm saying? The wolves and sheep clothing, the wheat and the tears, and all these different things. Um, but Ron, yeah, keep going. Brother Ron, would you like to answer that question as far as how, which, how, how they're reconciling this uh, issue with the two states? Oh, no. Well, they they can't because they'll have to identify who are the other uh, 10 tribes and then they're going to have to unite with them. Um, and where are they going to unite at? Um, are they going to unite until all the other 10 tribes to come back to Israel? Um to to you know live off the land and and do everything the bible says is supposed to happen um where are they going to get the other 10 tribes from are they going to go to china they're going to go to india they're going to go to where are they going to go you know because they obviously don't want to go to africa and include the any of the tribes because then that then they run into a problem of okay well if the ebos are israelites uh then by according to dna then the rest of uh the bond to sub-Saharan Africans are also Israelites. You can't say the Ebos are Israelites and the Ebos DNA is like 99.98% the same as the Yoruba. Can't, I mean, you can't, and then, and then by saying that, then they're saying that the, all the African-Americans, a lot of them are Israelites too, and those in the Caribbean and those in South America. So now you have, you know, now you have the majority of modern jewelry being black and not Ashkenazi, you know? So, because obviously we outnumber the Ashkenazi population in the world. So if they were to acknowledge that the Bantu people are part of the tribes of, of, the, of the Northern Kingdom, then they will essentially now acknowledge that modern jewelry is majority black and Ashkenazi Jews are a small percent, like 1% one, 1 or 2% of the population of modern jewelry. And then, you know, the, I don't think they're ever going to unite with black, black people in Sub-Saharan Africa. Uh, they're not going to do that. And they're definitely not going to allow black people, if they say, okay, we de we determine that you guys are Issachar and Ruben and, and Gad and Zebulon and Asher and these other tribes, they're not going to say, okay, now we identify you guys as these other tribes. Now by law, we have to uh, grant you Aaliyah to come back to Israel 
because you know we're all the Israelites, and so we we they, we we guys got to come back too, and they're not going to do that. They're not they're not going to say, okay, come back, because Israel does not want black people to, to take over Israel, because that would be a takeover. If they said Uganda, Congo, Nigeria, the Lembas, the Ethiopians, and everybody else, you know, African Americans, you guys are Jews too, come on back to Israel, then we will, it will be a takeover, and the face of Israel would be black then. And the Ashkenazis, the Ashkenazis would say, we don't want to live with these black people. But the scriptures say that the two sticks are supposed to come together and become one. So is 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 that prophecy going to happen or not going to happen? And with the, with the current Jews today in Israel, they're not going to fulfill that prophecy. <laughs> so that means that the Bible, is the Bible, uh, is the prophecy real? I mean, is, is, is it in the Dead Sea Scrolls? Is it yes or no? And uh, it's something we need to be paying attention to because this is this is so this sort of ties into uh the the last battle um you know the battle of jehoshaphat the valley of jehoshaphat the battle of armageddon you know and i don't i frankly i don't think that, that the jews today care any about uh ezekiel 37 and 38 they don't care about that stuff they don't care about it that's and that's, and that's a red flag Wow, that is um, that's a revelation, and 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 I, I I agree with your position on that about you know the blackening of Israel would definitely have to happen because once you let that one string unravel, it's all coming down after that. But we see that with um, their with their at least um, their semi welcoming of the quote unquote Ethiopian Jewish community. We already see that even though they have opened the doors to some of them to come onto their land, that the majority of the inhabitants there do not want them there. They do call them all kinds of uh, derogatory names and, and racist epithets. So uh, that's evident from just them, quote unquote, accepting them to be a part of the tribe of Judah. But I want to move on really quickly to this last claim that was made. Um, I found this one a bit interesting. The Jews lie in their claim that Jesus Christ was a Jew. Um, get, maybe you can expound a little bit on that one for me, because, you know, I've always looked at it. Uh, I don't want to say always since I've come into the awakening that uh, Jesus Christ, if he were of Jewish descent, uh, that would make him of Japhetic descent that would put him in that bloodline, which means that he would not be the lion of the tribe of Judah. Uh, but they say that you claim that he does not have a uh, heritage as a Jewish man. What are your thoughts on that? So the word, the word Yehudi is, is, you know, basically come from um, the word Judah. Um, because we know the word Yehudi, when you, when you look at it, 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 the root of it is what you would get for Judah. And so the Bible doesn't say the children of the Yehudi. You know, it usually talks about the sons of Israel, the children of Israel, you know, Bena, Bana, Israel, you know. It doesn't say that the, the children of the Jews in reference to the 12 tribes because Judah did not have all the 12 tribes of Israel. You know, Jacob did, and he was renamed Israel. So when the Jews say that I'm a Jew, a lot of times if you ask them, they will, you know, they might say that, you know, that means Judah, right? You might say it means Judah, but in technic technicality, and we Jews might say, okay, you're a Jew by religion, uh, by the religious uh, teachings or followings that you practice, or you're a Jew by your mother, um, you're a Jew by your mother, because your mother has to be a Jew, or what does that mean? She has to be an Israelite, or she has to be uh, of the tribe of Judah, um, you know, was Mary's, Mary's father of the tribe of Judah, you know, was Elizabeth from the tribe of Judah? You know, you start to ask questions, and 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 that's when they get into a trouble because you know what is it here? But we know that Christ had to come through the line of of Judah, 
uh, for the scriptures, you know, but I always, I always say, this is the thing. When you guys, when you guys say today that you are Jews, in my opinion, I equate that to somebody that is a follower of Judaism, um, yeah. modern Judaism, and that they, they basically are a people for me, I will say they when I when I look at the word Jew, I say, okay, a Jewish person is somebody that is of the white race that is converted um mm -hmm. that follows the religion of Judaism and they are ethnically of the seed of the Gentiles of Jacob. Uh that's what today a Jew is to me. Somebody that's an Israelite is somebody that's the bloodline descendants of the 12 tribes of Israel. And the Jews have con can confuse people with that word because that word, really, when you look at the Bible, the Old Testament, or the Torah, you will see that the word Jew is not in the Torah. Right. It's not in the Torah. Man. Um, and you see it in, like, Jeremiah and Zechariah, Nehemiah. But here's the thing, and I, and I, and I broke this down in my books. When you, when you look at the word Jew in English and you go to look at the context of how it's used in Nehemiah and Jeremiah um, and the other verses, I think Kings, you will start to see something fishy going on and because you have, to, you have to cross-reference English, Aramaic, Greek, um, not ancient Hebrew because we don't have that, but you have to go back to the to the Greeks of Tuatin because that was the first time that we have any written sources of the the, the complete Old Testament uh, that was allowed to be given to us, the Septuagint. You know, and then of course you have Latin, you have uh, English, and then we have our Aramaic. But when you look at the context of how the word Jew in English was used in the Greeks of Tuatin, you're going to see that it, it changes. It changes in the in the in the different uh, book chapter and verse in the Old Testament, and the crazy thing is, is that, the, that the word Jew is like is in the Book of Esther like seventy times, seventy plus times, mm -hmm. like the Book of Esther. It's like, yeah. wow, like why is the word Jew so many times in this Bible in the, in in this book? And you will see at the at the last the last one of the last verses in the last chapter of the Book of Esther. Yes, sir. It's, it's the scripture that says. Um, all the people of the land became Jews for the fear of the Jews fell upon them. And so I was like, wait a minute. I said, how can how can the fear of the Jews cause all the people in the land to become Jews? That doesn't make any sense. I said, you, you can't be like I can't be, I can't become uh a Lermias. Mormons can't become a Dalton, you know. Uh I can't become uh an Asian man, you know, like a descendant of Chinese, or I can't become a descendant of Genghis Khan or Attila the Hunt. You know, I can't, I can't do that. I can't say that I'm a descendant of Gandhi, you know, or Marco Polo, you know, or Julius Caesar. I can't say I'm a descendant of these guys. You can't, you can't become of the tribe of Judah because you're scared. If somebody scared you and they said, "Okay, I'm of the tribe of Judah," no, no, that that doesn't work. Like that. So whoever. Whoever was writing our Bibles and translating our Bibles and author authorizing our Bibles, because the book of Esther is in our Bible. It may not be in the Dead Sea Scrolls, but it's in our Bible. And who put it there? And why is the word Jew so many times in that Bible? And why are these scriptures pointing to the fact that anybody could be a Jew, no matter what? That's the problem that I have when, when people start to say, what do you mean Jesus Christ wasn't a Jew? Well, I mean, technically, when you look at these things, is it Judean? Is it Judah? It be, is it somebody that's a convert? What is it? You like, what is it? At the end of the day, nobody really knows. One thing we know is that Christ, when Christ was on the earth walking, he, the Jews were converting people because the Bible says that you guys can come, come past land and sea, uh, creating proselytes. And every proselyte <laughs> you make, becomes what do you say twofold more of child of hell than yourself right so christ said christ said that your doctrine your beliefs your religious teachings what you call as a jew somebody's a jew he said by you got you guys going out and converting people to become 
Jews learning your doctrines? I said, he's Christ said they're twofold of uh, twofold more of child of hell than yourselves. So that that was like that just showed you that Christ did not have any, he didn't want to have anything to do with being a Jew. At that time, if they were if they were calling themselves Jews, Christ wasn't going around saying I'm a Jew too, because he despised what they were doing. And he always called them degenerate vipers and 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 all this other stuff. You know, and even even the scripture with the Jews. The Jews or the Pharisees came to, came to Christ, uh, and he was talking about you know being set free and all sort of stuff. And and the Jews were like, like, wait a minute, like our ancestors, we had never been in bondage to any man. They were talking about <laughs> like, like he was talking about. They were they didn't understand like you know Jesus basically told them you know the truth shall set you free and you'll be free indeed all that stuff. And, and the Jews were like. No, nah, brother. No, nah, brother. Like we, we, we have never experienced bondage at all. But if you were a true Israelite, you would know your whole history has been bondage. Even, even Paul, um, even Paul recites the history of the Israelites. You know, from Exodus and how they were in bondage and all sorts of stuff. Even he recites that. You know, and so Paul knows. Paul knew these things, but the Pharisees knows that were called Jews at that time. Um, they weren't real, in my opinion, they weren't real Israelites. Majority of them wasn't, wasn't real Israelites, and this is the reason why. Um, in the New Testament, we don't see the word Edom no more, we right. don't see like the, a, mm. lot of, a lot of words, we don't see a lot of words about the different tribes. Ron Paul, Paul. Say, Ron Paul, yeah, so. Paul does say, <laughs> Paul does say, Benjamin. There's a verse in the Bible in the New Testament that says Asher, but you don't really see a lot of, you don't really see a lot of, uh, uh, words that are like mentioning all, all these different tribes, except for when you go to the book of Revelations, uh, you see these different tribes being listed. And of course, you know, um, Christ says in, in Revelations 2 9 through 9, I know those that say they are Jews and are not, you know, but you know, then, then even then, you, you got to say, well, the context of uh, what a Jew is, uh, is it, a, is it, does it in that in the Bible we read in English, um, what context did the writer, um, think about when he wrote the word Jew um because like I said earlier the word Jew is not in the old it's not in the in the in the in the, in the Torah it's not in the Torah so you know even the people in the people in the Congo uh and in Africa they're not gonna they're not gonna say um we are the true Jews they're not gonna use the word Jew you know right. these words uh you know because technically you had the Y first and then you had the uh the i and you had the j so i don't like to use that word um if we're referring to israelites and when i think of the word jew i think of like the pharisees of old i think of the wolf those that converted to judaism those that followed uh that judaism that they were they were teaching and following in the in the new testament that christ despised their teachings and christ wasn't about what these guys were were about so no christ was not yeah, I'm glad you covered that part because when I also read the book of Esther and see how many times Jew, the word Jew come up, I'm like, why is there such a discrepancy in the amount of time that it comes in Esther versus all the other books in the, in the Old Testament? But then kind of like even before you and I discussed this, I was like, it almost seemed like the word Jew was used in the sense of convert as if they converted to it. Yes. Um, and when you think about a stumbling block happening now in the last days, it's throwing people off. Yes. And I'm kind of like, my motto and the way that I roll now is as I don't, I can never be anti-Semitic because I'll never be against the Jewish people and how they label themselves. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and I think we need to use this wisdom mm -hmm. because they call themselves Jewish and we have to allow them to be Jewish because <laughs> we're not Jewish people, we're right. Israelites. Mm -hmm. So if you can accept them from being Jewish, for well, being Jewish, they okay with that. And they can roll with that all day. Because mm -hmm. Jewish is not going to be in the kingdom. This is going to be the 12 tribes of Israelites. There ain't going to be no 12 tribes of Jewish. <laughs> There's no such thing. So we need to understand that it's an Israelite thing. It's not a Jewish thing. So if they want to be Jewish, let them be. 
you know, let let us all be inclusive, right? Be Jewish and we'll be because we already know anytime you add ISH at the end of any word, it take the characteristic of the original. So they already telling you who they are. If they say they Jewish, they are. They're telling you we are taking the characteristic of an original, right? So, and I know Israelites get mad. They be like, y'all ain't the real Jewish. Yes, they are. <laughs> they're not Jewish. They are. And so don't argue with them for saying that they're Jewish. Don't argue with them for saying that they're Jews because that's who they're telling you they are. And if you look at the word and if you have the word, how it breaks down, they're telling you because they know in the word itself, it has power. Right. I'm glad what Rick say. Cunning. It's word play. The scriptures say, be wise as a serpent, harmless as a dove. Let's all be wise in this hour. Like they are Jewish, and let them be, and let's applaud them for doing Jewish. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> now we know that those who wants to be part of the kingdom, they're gonna be grafted in, and right. they'll be just as the homeborn. So they'll become Israelites. They're not gonna become Jewish. Mm -hmm. So Ron, you're correct in that. Um, and if you want to elaborate on that, you certainly can. I mean, we pretty much covered it. Yeah, that, I mean, that's like you. Like you said, um, the context of where, where the word "Jew" is used most most of the times in the Bible is used in a, in a in a in like a almost like an insert. But then it's also like uh, they they're also telling you that a Jew is somebody that is of a, a com convert. So you don't when you look at the word "Jew" or "Yehudi" or whatever, you don't know if it's if it's if it's Judean. Or somebody's living in in the in the the territory of Judea, you don't know if they're talking about Judah. You don't know if they're talking about a, a, a convert. It's it's all this ambiguity when you look at that because we know that that there were there were sons of Judah all throughout the, the Torah. Throughout the Torah, you got Judah having all these kids, you know, all these sons. But but how come in the, in you know in the Torah, you know, I mean, how can we don't see a lot of the word Jew in how come in the, in the Tanakh, the word Jew is not seen a lot? It's really not seen a lot. It, it, you probably look at four different books of the Bible, the Old Testament. And in these four books, you'll find the word Jew scattered in, in certain scriptures. But, but then when you read the context of how the word Jew is used um, in English and in the Greek, you're going to start to you're going to start to uncover some things. And I. And when I when I researched this and I found this out, um, even when I counted all the all the words that I saw Jew in the in the book of Esther, and I tried to trace um, Esther's lineage back and Mordecai's lineage back to Benjamin um, or Saul, I, I couldn't do it. I, it was like a two hundred year gap that there's stuff missing that 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 you're like, wait a minute. I said if if, if this is the Old Testament, I should be able to trace this back all the way to, to Saul and Benjamin. Uh, through the father, um, but unfortunately, Esther, you know the the, the history of Esther and her parents, um, and her lineage to Benjamin or or, or Jewish or you know the twelve tribes of Israel is sketchy, and just seeing how many times the word Jew is in there, even that last chapter, I said, man, this is there's no wonder some people, uh, I think Martin Luther, some people rejected the Book of Esther. They said it was an insert, and the Book of Esther has Purim. And none of the Israelites in South in Sub Saharan Africa celebrate Purim. Even the Ethiopian Jews don't celebrate Purim. They don't know nothing about it. You know, uh, they're like, "What? We don't celebrate that." Even the ones that are in Israel, they don't celebrate. They don't celebrate Purim. So these are something. These are things that you know Persian Jews love dearly. And of course, the Ashkenazi Jews they have the celebrations of Purim where they get drunk and stuff. But you know, we have to understand that the, that the Europeans. And the Gentiles, they were the a lot of them were the were the ones who authorized the Bible, and they translated it, uh, so they have power to do what they pleased. Um, if they wanted to take out take out the word rhinoceros, and put unicorn, um, and all these different um, biblical animals, you know, they can do that, you know, because at the end of the day, you know, wild ass, wild bull, you know, well, you we know what an ass is, uh, ass is a donkey. And a donkey is domesticated. A donkey is not wild. A donkey is you don't you don't see you know most of the cases you don't see donkeys that can't be tamed. Donkeys can be tamed. Donkeys been have been used since ancient times to do the the labor work and and 
and stuff of, of mankind. But when you look at a, a wild, a wild ass, you can look at it, you can read the scriptures and say and see that it's talking about a zebra. Um, you know, and these things, um, whether you want to call a wild donkey a wild ass, and the wild donkey has the legs of a zebra, but then the upper half looks like a donkey, and you say, Was well, this a hybrid? Uh, just like you have an animal, I think called the okapi that looks like a, a horse and a giraffe mixed together and you find that in the congo and people don't know where this animal comes from because it's it's a it's a member of the so closest relative to the giraffe but then it also has stuff on it that looks like a zebra you know only zebras have so there's things you know that you got to pay attention to um that the gentiles have uh have masterminded and, and crafted their way into changing certain things and and i think the word jew uh the word Jew in the Old Testament, I think, is an insert, and I think that the book of Esther um, is is questionable because you know we see in in that last chapter, like I said earlier, like I said earlier, um, that what does it say? The fear of the, uh, the because of the fear of the Jews, the of the, of the, all the people, of the Jew of the land became Jews. When I read that, I said, "Man, this something's probably this is something something's wrong here." Something I I, I was like I, this. This book is not adding up because how in the world could the whole land of, of the whole land, it says the whole land became Jews. I said, what? I said, so it's a mass conversion or everybody just became one of the 12 tribes of Israel because they were scared of the Jews? Wow. I was like, man, something's wrong here. And, and that's when I started to lose hope in the book of Esther, especially when I saw how many times the word Jew was in there. I said, this is crazy. This is crazy. Why don't they just name the tribe? You know, so yeah, we got to think about these things, and 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 I put that in my book. You know, Jesus Christ is not a Jew, and you know, people can fight, people can get angry about that, but I'm not going to apologize for that statement because I believe that you know he wasn't a Jew. Yeah, I think your pop put the uh, the the scripture on there. It was Esther eight seventeen, and if every province and every city, whatsoever the king's commanded and his decree came, the Jews had oh this I O V and gladness of feast and a good day. And many of the people, the land became Jews for the fear of the Jews fell upon them. So they were scared of themselves. Yeah, that, you know, that's an excellent point. Um, you know, I, I had the, I literally had that question myself. Um, and I spoke to Brother Benea Israel about that. Shout out to Brother Benea Israel, uh, because it looked to me like it was a conversion. It looked to me like it was a mass conversion. But, you know, I do agree with you, uh, particularly around the point, uh, John 8, where where the Son of Man is saying that uh, he who of the sun sets free is free indeed, or you shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free, uh, where they talked about not being uh, into bondage by any man. We know that King Herod was uh, an Edomite by blood, mm -hmm. uh, but yet he was still considered a Jew. So it was very interesting to see that there was definitely mass conversion that took place. Uh, but as far as Esther, that that's an interesting point that you made. So what I want to do now is I want to get to the meat and bones, okay? <laughs> the meat and bones, right? What everybody's really here for. Um, so I'm gonna just keep it 100. I mean, like, how do you feel about this whole uh, this whole push, this uh, this this uh, instigation towards you? Uh, debating someone within the Jewish community. Uh, I made it uh, about uh, this gentleman here, Block. I apologize for the noise in the back, but about Block. But how do you feel about the idea of debating? Um, well, I've been I've been saying um, even before they canceled my YouTube um, channel last year, I've been saying that I want to, I want the top, the most top rabbi in Israel or America, uh, well known, to debate me and prove me wrong, you know. I, and I, and that's like I'm calling them out like Goliath, and they see what I put on YouTube, on Instagram, on Twitter. They see these things. They know that I'm, I'm calling out your top rabbi, you know, your top Israeli scholar. Uh, I want the top guy. Bring them to my, bring them to me. Bring you know, bring them to me. You know, like like come search 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 the world far and wide for your best warrior, and bring them to me so I could I could I could challenge them to to you know debate. But 
you know, like Kyrie kept telling the reporters, he kept saying, I'm, I'm not the one that made the documentary. He said, he's like, she was saying like some of the stuff in there was unfortunate. But again, I said, you asked me to apologize for something uh, and I'm not the one that made the documentary. He, he, I didn't, he, all he did was post the link. That's so why he didn't post the link. You know, he, he said, you know, you can read something and you don't have to agree with everything is in the, in the book. And just like we watch movies all the time, you don't have to agree with everything is in the movie. But he kept telling him, like, look, you know, I, I didn't make the documentary. And nobody said, nobody thought with the microphone, like, he kept saying the same thing. And nobody said, well, that we need to talk to the guy to made the documentary, you know, because he keeps saying this. And he's right. He isn't the one who made the documentary, but yet he's the one being attacked. For simply posting a link, he didn't even say anything. You know, it's like Michael Michael Jai White, the guy that I played uh, Spawn or something like that. He was he he was on Vlad TV, and Vlad asked him, "What did he feel? What did he think about it?" And he said, "He's like, again, yeah, this is one of these things that I, you know, I I I called some of my Jewish friends, and I almost called you, and I kept asking people. He would keep he, he said he said, but what did he say? Like, did he say anything?" And he kept saying that to Vlad TV, and Vlad, Vlad, Vlad said, "No, he didn't say anything." And then, and then he was like, "Okay, so he didn't say anything." So again, why is why are they going hard on on Kyrie Irving for what he did? And then Vlad, the Vlad guy was like, "Well, he posted a link to a movie." He was like, "Again, do you have to like everything that you that you see or read or watch?" No, you, you can. I mean, let the somebody likes it, somebody doesn't like it. That's 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 on them. But what? But he. But the guy, the Michael Jai White said. But he said, "What did he say? What did he actually say that was anti-Semitic?" He didn't say anything. He just posted a link, and so all all that time that the Jews were in an uproar, none of nobody contacted me and said, "You know, you think you know everything? You think that we're imposters and and we we were with part of the slave trades and all this stuff?" You know, why don't you just, we'll debate you. We'll just shut you up. We'll prove you wrong. You know, we got rabbis and Israeli scholars um, that are well-versed in Israeli history. And, you know, but nobody, nobody emailed me, called me, and said, I would like to debate you. I'm a rabbi at this synagogue. I'm a professor of Israeli studies at the University of Michigan or whatever, Stanford. No rabbi on the planet Earth emailed me and said, you know what, this guy, Ron Dalton, is challenging us Jews, and we want to shut him up once and for all. And, you know, I mean, Walter Black said, said that, uh, did that article, and he said, you know, we should debate him. Well, come on, debate me. Get your, get your best guy and, and debate me. But the thing is, they say all these things, and, and the Jerusalem Post, and I, and I emailed them, I emailed the Jerusalem Post, you know, because they have an email, um, they have a lot of emails, but uh, the main one that I looked at, I emailed them back and I got like this this generic message saying that we got your email, um, give us two days or something to respond uh, about your email. And, you know, the guy was saying, I'm a, I'm a coward if I don't accept the challenge. And I said, but y'all got, you guys are not going to even challenge me. You know, I don't care. You can, we can debate. We can debate because what's going to happen is they're going to suffer the, the most massive loss in history, and 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 if it's televised live in front of the whole world, which I which I want it to be, they it's that's, that's going to be a day of reckoning. It's going to be like the end. It's going to be like the end. Like Ron Dalton has like shown the world that these guys that keep saying they're shemitic, 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 shemitic. These guys must not know that the Israelites were hermetic shemitic they were hermetic shemitic you know so when you look at the shemitic branch branch families you know you see that you have uh afro-asiatic languages and afro-asiatic languages um are composed of many different uh branches you know you have the uh you had the the chadic you had the Cushitic, um you have <laughs> the berber you have like you have your uh um what do you call it? Uh, Egyptian, which they say is, is no longer used anymore. And then you have um, uh, Omotic and you have, uh, it's, it's like just different ones that you have. 
but when you look at it at the end of the day, you'll see that these language families uh, are mostly people that, of color that are speaking these languages. You know, when you, when you go to um, Ethiopia, Ethiopia has Shemitic speakers, Cushitic speakers, or Modic speakers. When you go to Chad in northern Nigeria, and you see that you have the Chadic speakers or, or people that speak Hausa. And then you go to North Africa, you got Berber, the Berber languages. And, and if you look at the, the, the originators of the Berber languages, it was originally black people uh, that had these Berber languages um, that are mixed with, that are, that are, that are Hermetic Shemitic. Uh, so when you look at the Bantu languages, which nobody, which nobody actually tries to investigate, you will see elements of Shemitic and Hermetic in the Bantu languages. And that's exactly what uh the afro-asiatic language is the afro-asiatic language is hermetic shemitic or shemitic hermetic you can anybody can google this and and, and understand that the word afro-asiatic is hermetic shemitic hermetic hermetic whether you want to flip, flip it one way or the other so when you look at the overall people that speak shemitic languages there's more people that speak shemitic languages that are black than they're all white the the white jews they may speak modern Hebrew, but they're a small percentage of the population of people that, that are actually speaking sh the Shemitic branch family of languages. So there's a lot of things that that they have a, they have uh, flaws in their teachings that can be addressed in um, in any type of debate. But the reason why they're not going to debate is because in order to continue to promote and deceive people with a lie, you can't go head on and confront the truth. You can't do that. You can't, and that's and that's the reason why um, Mr. Block is saying we just can't keep canceling him. We can't keep censoring him. We can't keep banning his books, trying to ban his movies from Amazon completely because that's the last platform that people can actually get it on. They don't. They don't ban the move. They don't ban the books from Barnes and Nobles. They don't ban it from Target. They don't ban it from Walmart. The last stand is Amazon, and they and they try to do that. So the Jews are doing exactly what Kanye West and others have been saying. You guys do have the power. You guys do have the control. You guys can tell Kanye West, you can't bank with us no more. You got to bank somewhere else. They can freeze his, freeze his assets. Adidas, Adidas can freeze his assets. They can get the court to freeze his assets. You know, they can, they can do all these things. They can media blackout you so that you can't, nobody wants to even see you talk on the media. You know, I guess they give Kanye West a chance to, talk on certain shows, you know, down to that, you know, you didn't hear from no more. They can ban you from Twitter. They can ban you from Instagram. They can ban you from YouTube like they did me. They could, they can censor um, videos that are promoting Hebrews to Negroes. They can censor people like Judah Mack. He's posting just a link to a picture. I think Judah Mack posted just a picture. A picture. Yeah, just a picture, yeah. It's a picture. He, and he, he did a video. Uh, and he said, he said, is this is it. He said, Hebrews to Negroes. I got banned twice on Facebook, 30 days, just for posting a picture of Hebrews to Negroes. So the Jews are showing that they do have this power and they do cancel anybody that goes against what they what they are trying to tell the, tell the world, or make the world believe. So Mr. Block is saying that by doing that, you're actually proving um, Rhyme and what he's been saying and others that that is true and it also makes them look like they're scared it makes them look like they're scared like they got something to hide and they don't <clears> want people to the truth and so to keep people knowing the truth we're going to simply ban this guy and all the thing everything that he does we're going to ban it in america in south africa if you try to show the movie in south africa we're going to follow him there and we're going to try to stop every attempt he makes to show his movie what are you scared of? If I'm teaching nothing but lies, let me teach lies. Let me teach lies because it's not the truth. Before, but they I, are, before you go on, Spence, before you go on, Spence, I wanted to show, because I love when I hear certain things and I see certain parallels in the scripture, I like to bring mm -hmm. it out because sometimes our people need to see it, right? Mm -hmm. If I were to ask anybody in the chat who's brave enough or some can say arrogant enough or narcissistic enough or even uh, 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 what I would say, uh, confident enough to say, bring them on, bring anybody. I'll go ahead and kill this uncircumcised Goliath, right? Bring that scripture up. I want to show you because the thing about it is nothing new under the sun. So when you see 
we are the people of the book, right? I'm, I'm going to show you all this parallel. I'm not saying in context, but look at the parallel. Um, I'm going to need more verses than that, though. That's why I said, okay, so like the verses after that. I want to, I want y'all to see the parallel. But I, I'll read from here while you bring it up. This is 1 Samuel 17, 20 says, it says, And David spake to the men that stood by him, saying, What shall be done to the man that killeth Philistine, this Philistine, and take it away the reproach from Israel? Because right now we are reproach. <laughs> like, it's shame. We got none to fight for us but the Most High. But he always worked through people. He always worked through his servants, his people, all right? And that's how we are able to see these, these, these victories. For who is this uncircumcised Philistine that he should defy the armies of our living Elohim? You got these people who are elite. They just spit in our face, reproach by word. They, with confidence, just like this man, with the, with the gall to say that Ron is coward. You see what I'm saying? Oh, he ain't going to show up. You feel what I'm saying? And the people answered him after this man saying, so shall it be done to the man that killed him. And Eliab, his eldest brother, heard when he spake unto the men, and Eliab's anger was kindled against David. We have people out here that are Israelites. They're going to be kindled against uh, Ron. They're going to be like, man, what you talking about, man? You're so arrogant. What you mean you're going to try to fight this dude? You try to go against these people. You're going to have the people. Our same brother's going to do the same thing. And it's just not Ron. It could be other people that's trying to go out and help and just do the will of the Father. And then people come against them because they have a certain mission, right? And he said, why camest thou down hither? And with whom hast thou left those few sheep in the wilderness? Ain't you supposed to be like some sheep boy? Ain't you supposed to be watching sheep? What you doing over here, your little scrawny self? You know what I'm saying? I know that pride. Like they know David, I know your pride and the naughtiness of thine heart. Cause he's a, when you look at the word naughtiness, this ain't like he like evil ways or he just bad like that. You see what I'm saying? Of thine heart. They know it. For thou art come down that thou mightest see the battle. They're like, what, you coming to see the battle or something? You know what I'm saying? You just coming to watch? And David said, what have I now done? Is there not a cause? Man, there's a cause yet. This is important, something going on. You come to see about it. And he turned from him toward another and spake after this manner. And the people answered him again and after that the former manner. Here we go. And when the words were heard which David spake, they rehearsed him before Saul. And he sent for him. So you can imagine David probably bragging, man, if I go out there, I'm going to kill this dude. You know what I'm saying? Y'all probably scared. I'm going to go out there, do my thing. Because the most eyes with me, right? We can only imagine. And David said to Saul, let no man's heart fail because of him. Well, Ron is saying the same thing. Let no man fail, man. These are, look, the most I equip the mute this knowledge, I can go there. I can go toe to toe. You see what I'm saying? Thy servant will go and fight with the Philistine. And Saul said to David, Thou art not able to go against the Philistine to fight with him, for thou art but a youth. And he a man of war from his youth. Man, you're going to have a lot of people that say, Ron ain't going to be able to do this. You crazy? You know, this man is just a physician assistant. You want to go against the ADL? You want to go against the Jewish community? Are you crazy? That sounds crazy, don't it? David probably sounded crazy to these people. He's a man of war. And David said unto Saul, Thy servant kept his father's sheep. And there came a lion and a bear and took a lamb out of the flock. And I went out after him and smote him and delivered it out of his mouth. And when he rose against me, I caught him by his beard and smote him and slew him. Look, I'm not saying Ron is David. Ron is Ron. But I already know a lot of stuff in the background which makes him who he is today. For any man that has the gall to be able to come out and say, man, just bring him on. David did the same thing. We read about David. We admire David. David was a sinner too. David committed adultery. Matter of fact, he killed a man and we still honor him. But sometimes we can't even find it in our heart to honor somebody who ain't done nothing close to what David did. You sure I'm saying? So you got to understand what the Most High is doing in this hour right now if you really don't understand. And I caught him, and, and, and David said, and I caught him by his beard and smote him and slew him. They said, I ain't scared. Man, I've been doing this. I've been slaying giants. Thy servant slew both the lion and the bear and is uncircumcised for the, he bragging, uncircumcised for this thing shall be as one of them. Man, I'm going to do him like the lions and the bear. 
saying he had defied the armies of the living Elohim. So the people out here, they're defying us. They're defying our Elohim. They're defying Yahuwah. They're, they're crapping on his name. So when someone come up and say, man, I'm here to stand for the most high, to prove the truth, we got to be able to applaud that, allow him room. David said, moreover, Yahuwah, that delivered me out of the paw of the lion and out of the paw of the bear, he will deliver me out of the hand of the Philistine. And Saul said unto David, go, and Yahuwah be with you. The same thing we should say. Now, I'm not saying Ron is going to debate anybody or anything, but when we hear most I prepare somebody for such a time as this, we ought to be able to applaud that, not only applaud it, but support it. Because when we can see the faith of someone who's not just talking, but is willing to go to the battle physically, we thought we ought to applaud that. You see what I'm saying? So the most I is going to give us the delivery. He ain't just going on account of himself. You think Ron doing this because of himself? Ron got eight kids, one on the way and married. You know what kind of risk that is? <laughs> no one, no mm. one just, just say, oh, I'm just going to go, please. I'm just going to go ahead and. Unless you know you got the most high with you. You see what I'm saying? So, man, let's respect the game. Let's respect what the most high is doing in this day. Let's respect what he's doing in this day. And I hate to come up with this because I always, for some reason, the rule I just always flow in this way. You see what I'm saying? Because sometimes we got to show our people what time it is. You know, we read about the people in the We are, if you believe we are the people of the book, right? And those mm -hmm. are our ancestors. Best believe you're going to start to see people the Most High is going to start to raise up people with that same tenaciousness, with that same insatiable appetite to defeat the enemy or those people that are against the Most High and his people. Yeah, I see you got your hand up. Hey, I have to go there. So go ahead. Go ahead, Ron. Um, we, have to, we have to understand that at the end of the day, people are scared. Um, they're scared. The Jews are scared of, of Ron Dalton and Hebrews to Negroes, and people are scared of this subject because when you look at it, when Roseanne Barr, Barr said what she said about the Holocaust didn't exist and the Jews need to die, the Jerusalem Post and the Times of Israel covered the story. And the same, these same magazines they covered the same story about Kyrie and Hebrews to Negroes, the Jerusalem Post, the Times of Israel, CNN, Fox, you know, uh, New York Times, the New Yorker, the Daily Beast, Forward, the Washington Post, Newsweek, all these different platforms that are that are controlled by the Jews. So they they knew they knew who Ron Dalton was. They, they knew who I am in Israel and in America, but yet. Nobody, nobody, they saw, the, they saw, you know, how dare this guy put out this movie and book. Um, they didn't want to see my name on live air. They didn't want to show my picture mm -hmm. on live air, which, you know, the most high has a reason for everything. They could have easily said, just like when Mel Gibson did Passion of the Christ, and they said that he was, he, it was anti-Semitic. You, you can see Mel Gibson's face on the screen. And they interviewed him. Um, you know, about some of the stuff that was said in the movie, in the movie. And he was under attack for a while. Um, and people, people on the, on the news, they said, passion of the Christ. They said it. However, on the media, they said anti-Semitic film and book, that film, that book, the book, the, the film that Kyrie Irving promoted, the anti-Semitic film, the, uh, author, uh, of the book. The anti-Semitic book and film, they never wanted to say the name of the book in the movie, and they never wanted to say the uh, author Ronald Dalton Jr., filmmaker author <laughs> Ronald Dalton Jr. He's he's produced um, multiple films. Um, you know, it, you know, you can you can you know you can see these films. They're anti-Semitic. They didn't want to let you know that on Amazon they have another film, that's the Revelation film. They don't want you to know about that because they want you to. Stay asleep to the first, to, you know, to all the movies. But notice how the defiance, the, the, the anger that the Jews had uh, in the NBA and in, in Israel and America and the, and the celebrities that, that were, and the activists that were calling for the banning of Hebrews, to Eagles, and Amazon, taking it down, and ADL, writing a letter to the Amazon executives. They were so furious 
and angry about this movie and book, but yet none of them said, oh, we're gonna we're gonna get this guy on our show. We wanna we want this guy to to to, to, to answer some questions. We want this guy sitting down at our desk and our in our whatever they have, whatever how they do it. We want this guy to answer some questions. We want to put him on a hot seat. We want to see if we can make him buckle. We want to see if we could we can if he could trip up on his words and what he believes and he if he can actually stand by what he says. We want to see what we want to we want to hit him with the same kind of questions that we hit Kanye with Kanye Kanye West with and Kanye West be you know trying his best to answer these questions. The same same way they interrogated uh, Kyrie and Kanye, they should have wanted to interrogate me on live TV, but they didn't. Nobody emailed me. Nobody phone called me and said we want to interview you. They actually those that did that did call from these companies. They said we want a written statement. He said we we want a written statement. And I said no. I said you. I said interview only. And they said no. We don't. We don't want to interview you. We want a written statement. I said no. I said you're not going to take a written statement and then and then alter it, flip it, do what you want with it, and then I see it the next day and and I and I'm like I didn't say that. No, I said you get it. You interview, interview or no, or that's it. And they were like, "Oh, um, well, maybe I'll try to call you back tomorrow. And we can see about that." They didn't call the next day, <laughs> you know. And when you look, and when you look at the a lot of people, white people, Jewish people, black people watch the NBA. They they love Kyrie Irving. He's one of the best players outside of LeBron, Le, uh, LeBron James. So you know that the black people in the NBA, in the NFL in the major baseball league in hollywood and the music industry comedians what sports entertainment boxers mayweather all these guys all these guys seen what was going on dave Chappelle seen what was going on barack obama even said he even said oh recently there was there was some famous celebrity basketball player that, that posted some anti-semitic stuff and since when do we believe stuff that we see on tv even barack obama talked about it and it's in one of his speeches out, outdoors. So you got to ask yourself if Louis Farrakhan, Barack Obama, Dave Chappelle, you know, people are, are, are talking about it, tweeting it, you know, uh, Dr. Boyce Watkins and um, Tariq Nashi, Dr. Umar Johnson, all these guys, they know what's going on. Even the Breakfast Club, you know, uh, DJ, DJ MV, Charlemagne the God, they know about, they know what's going on. This is trending news. Vlad TV, Drink Champs. All your or all your your podcast, TV, radio platforms, black people that have YouTube channels that they have a lot of followers like Roland Martin, uh, King Kong Consciousness, Dr. Umar Johnson, Tariq Nasheed, all these guys, Candace Owens, all these guys, all these black people, even the, even the rappers that they're like, hey, have you ever shared a, a, a movie to the Hebrews and Negroes? And this this guy is defiantly refusing to apologize and. How come this guy? Nobody gets this guy on the uh, on the interview. Nobody's interviewing this guy. It's like he's a ghost. Like nobody knows who this guy is. Like I was I was sitting at home the whole time, and, and I told and Lawrence and Lawrence even asked me like, "Ram," he said, "Would you be willing to go on Breakfast Club if they if they if they asked you to?" And I said, "Sure." I said, "Sure." I'm I'm here in America. Let's get uh, tell uh, tell him when and where, and I'll be there. And I said, yeah. Lawrence, you can roll too. We can go into yeah. the club. We can sit yeah, down. I, 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 I'll address that too because I had a contact that was able to do it, but then when it came down to it, they didn't want to do it. You see what I'm saying? So we already know that they don't want this to come out. But Ron, I know, and I ain't trying to, you know, because I got a message to kind of continue a little bit after that. Um, and I understood what it is they're trying to say. If when you reach, uh, when you keep reading. It said, saw armor day with his armor, and he put a helmet of brass upon his head. Also, he armed him with a coat of mail. And David girded his sword up upon his armor, and he essayed to go, for he had not proved it. Okay, and David said unto Saul, I cannot go with these, for I have not proved them. And David put them off him. And he took his staff in his hand and chose them five smooth stone out of the brook and put them in a shepherd's bag, which he had, even in a script and a sling and was in his hand and he drew near to the philistine and the philistine came on and drew near to david and the man that bare the shield and went before him so a lot of times man you're gonna have people that come to you and they're gonna almost interrupt what it is that the most i already put in you you see what i'm saying so like obviously ron is a physicist and assistant with a concentration in genetics 
right? Well, no wonder why he talks about genetics, DNA, because it was already put there in him. And all the studying, his father was a pastor, mother, so he grew up in Episcopal. So all these different things, the most I had already prepared him in the very beginning. You see what I'm saying? Growing up in Detroit, toughened him up, right? So the thing about you have to understand your environment proves who you're going to be sometimes. It, it shows you your purpose and where you're heading, right? And so and when the Philistine looked about and saw David, he disdained him. For he was but a youth and a ruddy and of a fair countenance. And the Philistine said unto David, I, Am I a dog that thou comest to me with a stave? And the Philistine cursed David by his gods. And the Philistine said to David, Come on to me, and I will give thy flesh unto the fowls of the air and to the beasts of the field. Then said David to the Philistine, Thou comest to me with the sword and with a spear and with shield. But I come to thee in the name of Yahuwah of hosts, Yahuwah Sabaoth, right? And our Elohim of the armies of Israel, whom thou hast defied. So they say, I ain't coming. But guess what? They coming us with television and, and ads and they blacking, blackballing us on YouTube. Heck, sometimes our um, some of our forefathers, they killed them. Man, they got the world, all the weapons at their disposal to come towards us. But guess what David says? And um, in all this assembly shall know that Yahuwah saving not with sword and spear. For the battle is Yahuwah's, and he will give you into our hands. So <laughs> the thing about it is we got truth and we got the word. That's what we fight with because our weapon is not carnal. Carnal, you see what I'm saying? So when you look at what's going on, they got every weapon at the disposal, and they're the adversary. And I think Ron, you did a, a interview with adversary. It's really Satan. That's all it means. Satan means adversary. So anybody that comes against you by bringing truth, which is the word, which what cuts asunder, right? He's an adversary. So. When I get get a chance, read First Samuel 17 so you can get the full um, context. But I'm just showing you a parallel. In today's time, we have a lot of Davids. You know, Ron just happened to be one that's saying, and he's talking that junk. <laughs> bring him on. Bring him on. David did the same thing. But guess what? We read about David. But there are going to be people that look at you, Ron, and say, ah, oh, he's so arrogant. You saw they, they said that about David. You see what I'm saying? He's so arrogant. He think he know everything. Well, maybe he is. Maybe he do know it. Maybe he is confident because he's not going by himself. He's bringing the most high. If you take a chance and talk to Ron and have a real conversation, you best believe you who has been with him from the very beginning. So when you see what's going on, let's applaud the situation. This movement is by the most high, whether you like it or not. Well, the reason, the reason why they're not going to debate, just like the reason why nobody heard me on the radio stations um in america nobody said we got the guy that made the movie hebrews to negroes that Kyrie irving's on the fire we got him coming up coming up in 10 minutes on 107.9 fm atlanta or whatever nobody seen me on dr boyce watkins roland martin nobody seen me on anybody's platform like black that had a large following uh go black to africa probably had the largest following that 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 interviewed me on YouTube and in his in that video that we did, uh, YouTube gave him a, a strike and they took the video down. And I was like, and he texted me. I was like, what? He was like, yeah, brother. He said like, they they must hate you because I got a strike for doing an interview with you. I was in the I was sitting in the in a rental car outside of a hotel in Virginia. It was Virginia, Alexandria, Virginia, near D.C. and we simply talked. All we did was talk. I was just sitting in the car talking to him on Zoom. And he said, brother, he said, they, the Jews must hate you because they gave me a strike. And I, you know, he, and he, and just like we all know, if you get three strikes on YouTube, you lose your channel. And he's like, man, I'm not trying to get uh, three strikes and then I lose my channel. And he, and he said they took the video down. And so, you, you know, I was like, man, this is crazy. So when you look at these things, the, the reason why they don't want to debate they don't want to interview. They don't want to do anything because they are afraid of what will come out my mouth. They are afraid of what will come out my mouth. You know, when you invite people to the Breakfast Club, whether it's uh, Louis Farrakhan, Brother Ben X, Rizzo Islam, Tariq, Tariq Nashi, Dr. Umar Johnson, any of the members of Nation Islam, rappers, whoever. It could be anybody, Dr. Boyce Watkins. You have a 
a chance because it's because it's live. You can say what you can say what you want to say. Just like Kevin Hart and um, what's that girl that the comedian um that the female she, she said Tiffany, Tiffany Haddish. They were like, oh, you know the real Jews were black, but then but then they always kind of like go back. They thought, okay, I'm not gonna go any. I'm not gonna go any further. I'm not gonna say any, anything else, you know, because if you listen to what they say on the on the Breakfast Club. DJ MV and Charlemagne and and Angela Yee usually when usually when they say these things, they don't say they don't. None of them say, "Yeah, you're right. If we are the original Jews, we are." None of them comment and say anything. They keep their mouth shut. And the person that's, that's saying all the talking, they usually say, "But that's for another story. That's for another time." And they quickly stop. But they know that if Ron Dog gets on there, it's going to be just like, "Okay, we we got to cut this right now. We can't let him say this to millions of people listening." To the world we can't let this and there's and the reason why i keep telling people i said listen i said if you're being invited all across the world to jamaica barbados to africa to united kingdom to different countries to speak at different events where, where, where thousands of people are going to listen to you they're going to televise it uh they're going to you know they're going to listen to what you say just like dame dash and others they do the same thing they're not going to let somebody get this type of a platform to speak in front of a lot of people if they know that the message and what you're going to say is a threat to their agenda. They're not going to allow you to do that. They're not going to invite you. They're not going to say, we want Ron Dalton. We want him. We want there. And the Jews, even the, even Christian pastors that have a lot of following, uh, like the guy that challenged me to a debate, uh, Dr. Eric, uh, Pastor Eric Mason, uh, any of these guys, they're not gonna, they're not gonna do it. They're not gonna say we want to have this guy Ron Dalton on our show. We're gonna have this Ron, Ron Dalton. We're, we want to sit down with Ron Dalton at our church to see what, see the mind of Ron Dalton, why he believes what he believes, and let's let's see what he says. They're not gonna do it because they know one, they have fear of the Jews, fear what the, what can happen to them, and they they can't control what comes out of my mouth. And the Jews know that if they debate me live publicly, like the guy said, he said let's do a pub. Black said a public debate. At least a public debate. A public debate means that people are going to be able to see this. They don't want that because they know that the hot the Jews that are higher up in Israel and other places, they're going to say, no, 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 don't, don't do this. Do not do this. Just like, just like I believe that all the news reporters, before they went on air, they were told, when you do the story about Kyrie Irving, do not say. Hebrews to Negroes, Wake Up Black America, the movie on Amazon. Do not say filmmaker, producer, Ronald Dalton Jr., author of the book. Do not say these, do not say these words because once you say these words, people are going to be listening like, oh, and then they're going to say they got the they got the name of the book in the movie. Now they're going to go to their phone. Now they're going to go to the computer. They're going to go to to their TV because Amazon's on most of the TVs you have, your smart TVs. And they're going to say, okay, I got the name of the movie, name of the book, the name of the author. He's an author. Okay, let me check now. And they're going to easily access it now because they heard it on Amazon and it's going to just, they're going to just run with it. But if you give them more steps that they have to do to try to find out what this movie is called, like people were actually in some of the, the YouTube videos, people were like, what's the name of the movie? They were asking these questions like, what's, what's the name of the movie? Does anybody know? Laura's, we, even when I was in, in Florida, I was in Publix. I was I, I went to Five Guys on the Burger. I went many places, and I said, um, even at the hotel in 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 um, Virginia, the hotel in D.C., the hotel in 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 um, in Georgia, so hotel like South, South Carolina. I would ask people. I said, hey, you know that you know that basketball player that that posted a link to the movie, and, and, and it's all 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 over the news. And they said, yeah, yeah, yeah. Kyrie Irving did that. Yeah, I asked him. I said. Do you know the name of the movie that he posted? Do you know that majority of them said no? <laughs> the majority of them said no. I'm not even lying. I went yeah. to the, I went to, I went to the Sonesta uh, Sonesta Suites in Washington D.C. on the, the main road near the embassy. Um, they have a road. They have an embassy that's uh, like an embassy road. And the guys there, they all knew what Kyrie Irving did. They're like, "Yeah, that's my boy, Kyrie Irving. Yeah, he posted that link to a movie." Got the Jews mad. They were like, "Yeah, man, that's crazy." And, and I was like, "I'm the one that I'm the one that made the movie in the book." They were like, "Stop lying." I said, like, "Yeah, I was." And they were like, "What's your name?" Ron Dalton. And then they started googling Ron. They they Google Ron Dalton. But before that, I said, "Do you know?" I said, "Do you know the name of, the, of that movie that he posted?" 
a link to it? And they were like, they, both of them were looking at each other like, no, I don't know. I mean, it has something to do with, with the Jews. But that's, that's, that shows you how clever and crafty the Jews and the mass media are. They don't want to say these things. They put it, they'll put it in like a magazine article like New York Times, maybe uh, Times of Israel, Jerusalem Post, you know, stuff like that. But they really didn't say it on air. Even even Dave Chappelle, he said he, he booed to Deagles, you know, and, and, and people started laughing and stuff like that, you know, because it was a joke. But, you know, Dave Chappelle could have easily said, the name of the movie was Hebrews to Negroes, but instead he kind of made it like you know he didn't know what what the word was. He he bold to Negro. You're like, huh? What 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 is this thing? You know. So you know, it's just all about exposure, exposure, and the Jews don't want that kind of exposure. So as much as Mr. Block said that they need to publicly debate me, the Jews do. Um, if they w really wanted to. They could have made that happen a long time ago. Uh, and, and, well, and well, they could have, thought, they could, oh, go ahead. Sorry. You know, I was going to say, you know, my thoughts about that is that, you know, I, I'm I, I, the way I think about things sometimes is, uh, and I love everything that you said. Uh, what What's the motive behind it for me? So now you have this Jerusalem Post that it is mentioning the name of your book, clearly saying Hebrews to Negroes Wake Up Black America. And the timing seems very funny to me that after all of these months where everything has been kind of silent, all of a sudden now we're talking about this book again. We're talking about making it clear who wrote the book, Ron Dalton, whereas before it was like, we can't talk about Ron Dalton. We can't talk about the name. So I'm wondering if they've re-strategized and they're baiting <laughs> That is that's something that I'm I'm wondering if that's a possibility that there could be baiting that's going on because they have something up their sleeve, the hidden hand. And we know that that's something that they do. Do you think that's a possibility? And even still, if it was, would that change your position? Not to say that your position should change. I, I think that you made excellent points, you know, about um, just going before this uh, at the top scholar and making sure that it's public and essentially obliterating any of their points. I think that uh, that is definitely something that uh, we should highly consider and applaud and definitely applaud. But do you think that they may be covert in their plans as to why it is that the timing has happened now for this article to come out and that they're mentioning you in the book? Well, we know that in the past that um, they the we're, we already know that the jews um have the support of the fbi right if they didn't then they wouldn't have um news news uh um videos where the fbi is working with the fbi the fbi to come up with uh programs uh to fight anti-semitism so they have the backing of the white house they have the backing of the fbi to counter anti-semitism and to create task force and programs that that they they're how are they going to do that um to combat anti-semitism or the rise of anti-semitism um it's not it's, it's not illegal like they can't put you in jail they can't lock you up throw away the key because you wrote a book or said that we are the real jews and you're not they can't do that i mean they they, they if they if they if they could they probably would you know they probably label all black people that say they're Israelites or Israelite assemblies, these are all terrorists. We need to raid all their assemblies right now and lock them up, throw away the key. You know, like, you know, they, 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 if they wanted to, they, if they really, really wished themselves that they wanted to do this and they had the power to do this, then I think that they would do that. But as of right now, they can't do that. All they can do is whine, whine and complain about it. But we know that in the past, like a lot of the black leaders have been infiltrated by the Jew, by white people and the Jews. Uh, Marcus Garvey was was sentenced by a Jewish judge. He had Jewish jurors that laid the fate to Marcus Garvey going to jail, and then later, you know, they sent him back. That you know, the whole Marcus Garvey thing just kind of just kind of ended after after what they did. And then same thing with M MLK, Michael Max, Huey Newton, the Black Panther Party. We always see a, a time where um, white America uh, and possibly even um, Jewish people behind it were were crucial in preventing the rise of a black messiah um somebody that could electrify and unify and get and, and put black people on a on a positive course for the future um and 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 we got to understand that that in in the ancient in the old days 
you know, this was about civil rights. This is about voting. This is about protecting ourselves, taking care of ourselves. Um, you know, going back to Africa, saying forget America. These are these are all things that our leaders from, uh, were promoting, and they were considered at their time um, like black messiahs. Uh, now we have the rise of the Israelite movement and awakening, and you know they also have to figure out how are we going to stop any type of uh, unification uh, or a movement uh, of this Israelite doctrine that's going to start spreading and, and taking hold of black people. Maybe these guys are going to start coming together and unifying and uh, empowering themselves, educating and edifying themselves, even to even to the point where they're going to go to Africa and spread this message to the Bantu people in Africa. And it's going it's going to take wildfire in Africa. And so they might see uh, myself as a as a as a, a a figure like a like a like a like a, like a leader that back in the old days was considered a black messiah to them, and they had to take these people out, or they had to shut down an organization or assembly if they had one. So the Jews may you know I'm not I don't fear you know physical harm or any of that nature or any of that things even though I know that this this is how sometimes uh, the elite get down, but if they if they, if we were to have a debate. Obviously, we will have it in a neutral ground, in neutral territory. It wouldn't be in their synagogue, it wouldn't be in their facility, it wouldn't be in their territory where they can they can do what they want to do. It would be somewhere that that is neutral and somewhere that we have more more of an advantage uh, to make sure that everything is done in decency and order, and it's safe and it is publicly televised to the world, um, and and it's done academically um, because because when you look at how uh, college uh, college uh, uh, Colleges debate like Stanford and Yale and Harvard, you know, they usually have a podium uh, and a microphone and sometimes sometimes a screen and you have two sides. And, and in these days and age, you have a computer, you have you have presentations, you have visuals, you have stuff people can read and you can lay your point very easily and, and break down the proof of why we are the Israelites and why they are not the Israelites. And then you can cross examine. Um, them by asking them questions and seeing them saying, and having them give answers, they could do the same thing to you. They could say, okay, Ron, we want to ask you a question. And so these type of debates where you bring forth information and facts and research and not opinions, not biases, not feel feelings, um, this is what they don't want because they're not strong in 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 the in the area of information, information, research, and facts. They have a lot of opinions and, and, and beliefs that they always uh, put on people, and we just we just falsely believe them. You know, uh, you know, like if they say we are the people that we are the people that came out of uh, Egypt with Moses in the Exodus, Ashkenazi Jews. Like, like they will say these things, but then you will say, okay, white people were in Egypt in bondage, and they came out with Moses. And they left Egypt and they went to the land of Canaan. Like, show me the proof. How can you how can you prove this? Prove it. How? They can't prove it. They know they can't prove it. If they say that we can trace back our lineage going back to King David, King Solomon, using the maternal line, and you say, Show me the proof. They say, We have the proof. I say, Show me the proof. They can't do it. They can't show the proof. You know, if they if they say their DNA connects themselves to whatever, you're gonna say, Show me the proof. On the father's side and the mother's side, we have a problem there too. If they say that we speak the Shemitic language, and our language is the only really verified and 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 real Shemitic language, in addition to Arabic and maybe uh, Amharic, then you're, you're going to say, well, let's 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 go into the let's go into the breakdown of the Semitic languages and Afro-Asiatic languages, and there they there they're going to have another problem. So they're they're going to have problems upon problems that they cannot bring forth. And explain in a in a educated academic debate. So they could be wanting to debate for a different reason, but the block tends to think that if they debate me and then I lose, then he said I'm gonna lose all my followers. And I don't think that I'm gonna lose any followers because <laughs> they say, Oh, we won, we won. No, nah, we we already know we're the Israelites, you know. And so I, I hear what people say. We don't really have to debate him. We know the truth. I mean, we don't have to debate the, the Jews. But at some point, the at some point, I believe, I mean, maybe not, there's gonna be there's gonna have to be a great debate where we or somebody uh debate somebody with a top top uh Jewish rabbinical status or a scholar and 
proves proves to them in the world and whoever watches it uh, that they don't know what they're talking about, and we do, um, because at the end of the day, the whole world um, follows this anti-Semitic thing because they're the ones that are telling people that we are Semitic, the Arabs are Semitic, and you guys are not. So therefore, we're gonna talk. We're gonna call you anti. Semitic, and nobody has challenged them yet on what is a Shemite. Who is a Shemite? And 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 this is something that needs to be talked about. But fortunately, the Jews are the ones that are are the controllers of uh, this word Shemitic. And who was a Shemite? And who was an Israelite? And it's sad because you know, Lormans, as you know, they're the ones that that told the Ethiopian Jews that okay, you're from the tribe of Dan. You know. <laughs> Ethiopian Jews didn't say we're from the tribe of Dan. We're from the tribe of Dan. They didn't say that. The Jews decided that. You know, so I mean, even even when they went down to the Lemma Jews and said, "Oh, you guys got the same DNA that we got," uh, so it must mean that we're, that we're uh, priests, and maybe you guys are Jews too. You know, and so the Lemma Jews, you know, they say that they're Jews, and and there's Jews of every color, and being a Jew does does not mean that you're black. Um, as some one lemma guy told me, he said, "Oh, the Jews were color. Uh, I'm Jewish," and I said, "You're an Israelite." He said, "No, I'm Jewish. Uh, Jews are not just black; they're of every color uh, because we follow the the, 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 the the Judaism, whatever." But this is how we we look at how the Jews today, as we know, have convinced black people in Nigeria, black people in Ethiopia, black people in South Africa. That they had to wear the little box on their head, the tuffle and they had to put the little leather strap on their arm. They have to put the kippa on their head. They got to put the the little the the, uh, the 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 shawl over them. They got to bob back and forth and all sort of stuff. No, they, I mean this this is stuff that they told you you got to do. You got to convert. You got to do this. You got to take a bath. You got to change your name. You got to learn modern Hebrew. They are the ones that if they're the ones that set set the, the precedent of who's an who's an Israelite, who's Jew, who's not to the to the prophet goes to the Papua New Guinea. They're saying that they come, they're descendants of Israel. He get they do a DNA test. They wait for the results, and the results come back. And to the prophet, to the to the says, "Nah, your DNA is not matching with ours, so you're not the you're not the real Israelites." Um, but here's some kippas. Here's a here's a flag with the the, the hexagram on it. You know, you can, <laughs> yeah, that's, that's that's what they did. That's exactly what they did. They went to Papua New Guinea to, to oh, the prophet and his team. And and they were telling them that they're descendants of Israel, and one day they hope to come back to Israel. And they were all excited because the Jews are coming there, and they're talking to them, and they're learning about them. They're telling them all their stories. The Papua New Guineans to the to the Jews. The Jews do their DNA test, and they and they say they come back. Well, no, nope, you guys don't have the DNA that, that that says you're a Jew. You know, good you know, good luck on that. And and this is the this is a sad state that they're the ones that are the ones that tell everybody in the world that you're Jewish and you're not. And until we debate them and we prove that you are not Jewish or you're not, a, you're not an Israelite or you're not a descendant of Shem, then the whole world is going to continue to fall in line with this. And some, some would believe it because we all, we already see that at the end of the day that they try to censor a lot of the stuff that we put out. I mean, particularly Hebrews to Negroes. And, and I always wonder why, <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna cut up, I'm gonna stop. But why out of all the Israelites? I mean, we got Israelite um, assemblies, camps, organizations, churches, uh, rabbinical boards that are that are saying that they're Israelites um, and saying that, that the Jews are not the Israelites. Why out of all the people? Why is Rod Dalton banned from YouTube? And I didn't even, I didn't even have a lot of followers. I had like thirty nine thousand followers. That's it, thirty nine thousand followers. And I didn't post on YouTube almost every day or every other day. I didn't do that a lot. I didn't tell people make sure you make sure you click a subscribe, click the button, subscribe, thumbs up. I didn't I didn't do all that stuff. I didn't tell people make sure you click the subscribe. You know, I'm, I'm trying to get fifty thousand. I'm trying to get to hundred thousand. You know, yay! No, I didn't do any of that stuff. But yet, they banned me from YouTube. They banned me from Facebook. They banned me from Clubhouse. You know, they, they said, they, out, "Hey, they gotta pay for it. It's too free." <laughs> yeah, what, what I what I what I did it's say, free is, heat, free yeah. heat. <laughs> what, I, what I did say was, you can support me by GoFundMe Hebrews to Negroes Project, GoFundMe the Curses of Vision Project, GoFundMe Hebrews to Negroes African Mission H2 African Mission. I did say GoFundMe. I, I will put it on there. GoFundMe, 
And and when they shut down GoFundMe, they shut down all my GoFundMe. I said, what? I said, they don't want me funded either. They don't want me to have any donations or nothing. Hey, so they hey look, look, Ron, it's not that they're not the only one that want, don't want you funded. Even the Israelites don't want you funded. I mean, you know, a lot of times when you look at what's going on and this work is going on, and I know sometimes I'm blunt about what I say, but I say and I keep it 100. You know, I keep it 100 because I don't think people be understanding the value of what people like you or even those that are doing the work in a pure way, pure manner, although it may look weird. Like I always tell Ron, I said, bro, you you talk sometimes, you know what I'm saying? People, you don't say that because they don't understand you. And I get it, you know what I'm saying? And our people, they have trust issues, you know what I'm saying? And, and I get it, you know, coming from the church and people asking for this and that, donation, all of that. And we've been so messed up. We think everybody's doing it. It's for the wrong reason. But it's not always true, people. And the thing about it is we have the scriptures that you know them by their fruits. You see what they're doing. You see what I'm saying? The man got eight kids, <laughs> nine kids. He's just not doing this to feed his children. Obviously, he got to eat. I mean, who's going to stop? Everybody got to eat. Just be real. Be 100 with it. Even the pastors in the church got to eat. It's just they're eating too much. You know what I'm saying? But we're in the, we're in the truth. We still got to eat. But at least bless the people that are doing the work, man. Like, because it, it's difficult. You know what I'm saying? Even I doing this music, and I ain't just doing music. I'm doing stuff behind the scene. This is some tough work. You know what I'm saying? I mean, Jay Lutch and Gipai, they see it every day. You see what I'm saying? This is, man, look at I didn't sign up for this. <laughs> I didn't sign up for this. But guess what? I done did enough wrong in my life to know I got to pay some stuff back. You see what I'm saying? So if y'all can help a little bit, look, by golly, please do. Because it, it's not easy. You know what I'm saying? Um, and this is a good segue. Yeah, I mean, I hate to kind of steal this part. This is a good segue. Ron, you got this new movie coming out. And, oh, man, look, y'all. <laughs> you think Wake Up Black America, you think that is something. This new movie that's coming out, and everyone will have a chance to preview it, but you got to come to Florida, though. Florida, I think it's during November, November 17th and 18th. It's going to be winter, so those who are up north, just come to Florida. Just come. We got beaches. The sun going to be there. Everything. You know what I'm saying? Because um, I know the sun ain't visiting y'all in the north. It, it, it's, the sun is on vacation <laughs> in the north. But the sun is not on vacation in Florida. So y'all come over here where y'all can meet the sun. Um, so it's going to be a good time, November 17th. But this is going to be a state-of-the-art event. It's a conference that we're doing. It's called the uh, in the tribulation, end time tribulation. And it's going to be historic. No, that ain't it. <laughs> and then I'll have to give the people the wrong stuff. You probably, probably get to fly up. Okay, you probably get to fly up. Okay, great tribulation, the great tribulation conference, and this is gonna happen in Florida. Okay, we have some really great artists coming through. Not too many of them. And Ron is gonna be here, and I don't know if y'all saw the video of the guy who went viral in Africa, the preacher that was on national syndicated TV. And he told the people, prayerfully, y'all willing, he'll be here too. So, man, this is going to be huge. And not brother, only the brother from the Congo, huh? The brother from the Congo. I, I believe Ron can. Uh, I don't want to misquote, but Ron can elaborate on that. And we're premiering the new movie. Ron can tell you exactly the name of the movie and what it's sort of highlighting. You guys want to see this? And Ron can tell you how to get the ticket. I'm spearheading the event. I'm trying to put it together. Right now, we got a lot of things going on. Um, so if you see me doing a lot of things, it's going to be in Tampa, Florida. Tampa, Florida, Central Florida. So please, if you are a leader, invite all your people to visit the website to purchase their tickets. We're going to have hotels with rates and things of that nature. We're trying to plan a great event so you can enjoy yourself as you learn new things. There is going to be some exclusive groundbreaking information. And I ain't just saying it. I ain't trying to be a marketing guru or whatever the words I'm using. But it really is. And every time Ron brings something new to me, I always check it out. And it's like, Ron, I, not, I don't trust you, but I still got to, you know, I still got to research too. And it'd be some very thought-provoking stuff. And so you want to see what's going to happen. I'm telling you, you do not want to miss this. Uh, Ron, 
this is the segue we can talk about this conference. Speak to the conference as far as who you think y'all willing will be able to bring and this new movie that we're going to be doing, that, that you're actually doing right now, that we're going to be premiering, and speak to the content of it briefly. Um, yeah, the, the new movie, um, it's, you know, unless I make the movie four hours long, um, it's, it's you know, it's, the movie's going to cover cover a lot of things, but, you know, you may watch a movie and then at the end you see like a, a cliffhanger where it's almost like watching a Marvel movie and realizing that the guy that we thought that is dead, he's not dead. You know, he's, he's, he woke up and he's still going to wreak havoc. You know, you're going to be like, oh man, I got to see the next movie. Um, kind of like how they do Fast and Furious and, and different movies. They, they leave like a cliffhanger so that you, that you want more, um, you know, just like power, the series they have of power. So with the Hebrews, to Negroes three, um, it's going to be a lot of a lot of stuff uh, regarding Africa, um, and in the whole Exodus um, story, and do we know the true route of the Exodus? Um, was the Exodus to Israel, modern day Israel, or was the Exodus from Egypt uh, south and into the heart of Africa? Um, and can we prove this uh, with with uh, people that are knowledgeable uh, in um, Bantu history uh, as it relates to the Congo? And can we can we prove this uh, linguistically, uh, genetically? Uh, there's a lot of things that uh, <laughs> there's a lot of things I'm gonna bring out. It's gonna blow people's head off. And then also um, in regards to the land of Israel today. You know, if if the land of Israel today is, is not the true land of milk and honey uh, or the land of Canaan, then what land is it uh, and what happened and why why have we been deceived? In addition to that, how, how does this all tie into um, the prophecies of Ezekiel and uh, the nations that are going to gather um, in, the, in the mountains uh, the mountains of uh, Israel, because uh, that's what Harmageddon means essentially. Because Har is, is like a mountain or a hill. You can you can say it's a hill. You can say it's a mountain. But Har Megiddo, part of that word is mountain, uh, and it's going to be like people that's going to be coming together as a, a invading force, like an army, not just one group of people. But Ezekiel thirty eight talks about many many people, many nations, Gomer. Magog, Meshach, Tubal, um, Togomov, Persia, Kush, Pup, all these nations are listed uh, that are going to come against the Israelites. And the Israelites uh, are told to be prepared uh, and be on guard against them. So the Israelites are told to, to prepare thyself and all thy company and to be on guard. Um, for in the latter days, your land shall be visited by the people that's that's described in the book of Ezekiel 38 and it says that they're going to cover the land like a cloud um which is not just a, a group of people one group of person people coming from one side of the land like if if you look at how a, a cloud covers the land it covers a lot of the land it just doesn't it just doesn't cover the northeast section of the land um so if we are the real Israelites uh, then we have to understand that there are people uh, and nations that the most high listed in Ezekiel, Ezekiel 38 that are going to come against the Israelites. So that means that we need to we need to know who these people are and we need to start preparing because we start to see how these nations are setting up their Trojan horse scenario uh, for a massive invasion or attack. Then we know that we are living in in in, in the last days or in, in in the end times, leading to the la into the la the last days, the great tribulation. All these things are are, are kind of confolding together: the market of beasts, or at least digital digital money, biometrics, pandemics, um, um, global passports. You know that restriction movement. 
you know, we're seeing increase in sin, increase in homelessness, increase in unemployment, increase in poverty, increase in psychiatric, psychiatric illness, depression, uh, divorce, all types of things are going on in the world today. Uh, rooms of wars, you know, uh, America is being threatened. People are saying more and more often now Babylon's going to fall and they're equating Babylon to America. So it's not just people um, that are Israelites that are saying, but white people and other people are, are equating Babylon to America. And Babylon falls, falls hard. They're not saying Babylon is Iraq. You know, they're not saying Babylon is, you know, Israel. They're not saying Babylon is India or China or Malaysia or Singapore or, or the Philippines. They're not saying Babylon is in Africa. The most people are connecting Babylon to America. And we are in America. Um, and how does that look? So there's a lot of things I'm going to bring out. And, and one of the also one of the things I'm, I'm, I'm hoping to cram into the movie is the proof that the that the Jews are the descendants of the Khazars, uh, and the Khazars were a people that was known in in ancient history, in Turkic sources and uh, Chinese sources. Uh, so when you study uh, the Orient or the or the or the Far East, meaning China, uh, and also Western Western Eurasia or Western Asia or Central Asia, then we start to uncover some things in regards to the true uh, origins of the Khazarian people um, before they even was turned the word Khazars or Khuzari or Khazar and start to connect the dots to, to proving that the Jews today are the descendants of the Khazars and showing the proof that the Jews um, know about Esau and his um is a plan to use, use the the Gentiles to you know to kind of put forth their uh, what today would be the you know the end times prophecy because we have to look at the fact that uh, Esau is also um, integral in the battle of Armageddon and deception of the whole world and us believing that the land of Canaan or the land of Israel is a modern day Israel. And not in Sub-Saharan Africa, so he he was integral in all these things because he had to he had to team and join forces and make alliances, you know, marriage alliances, and alliances with the governments and 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 rulers of of ancient Rome and Greece and other nations. He had to do this so that he can he could he so he can basically fulfill biblical prophecy, even though he didn't probably know he was doing it, but he was doing it without even knowing it because that's what's supposed to happen. So all these things are kind of going to be be tied into the movie. Also showing people how we are we are you know living in some uh, perilous times, so that's why um, the movie is called Hebrews to Negroes Three Sound the Alarm because the movie when you watch it, it's going to sound the alarm on those that watch it that are going to look at it and say, hmm, uh, do I need to start really preparing myself for a showdown in America? Uh, or do I need to start seeing how can I prepare myself and my family if it's possible to get out of America um, if the Most High is going to lead, lead you in that direction? Once you watch the movie, you're, you're not going to go. You're not going to come through it and say to yourself, "Oh, I still believe that the that that America is the promised land. America, we're indigenous to the Americas." You know, like the, a lot of Israelites today, uh, they call themselves indigenous Indian Israelites, meaning that they 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 know that they say that they're the Israelites, but they say that they're indigenous to the Americas. Pastor Dahl even said, said he even said when I had a YouTube channel, he said, hey, "You listen, to this Ron, listen, to Ron Dalton. Who told you those? Who told you that was your people? Those ain't your people. You know, we we were already here. We have proof that we were already here." Those ain't your people. We ain't related to them. You know, there's people saying these things. And it's, it's on YouTube. It's on YouTube. You can go there and look at it right now unless they deleted it. So if the people in Africa ain't your people and, and we ain't come from Africa and we, we weren't put on slave ships because we were already here for thousands of years, but yet we're Israelites. And I'm not leaving this, this good old land called America. I'm going to stay here. I'm going to fight to the end for this land because it's my land, the land of my ancestors that built this land, blood, sweat, and tears. When people see the movie, they're gonna say, "Man, man, if 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 this if Sub-Saharan Africa is really the land of Canaan, then how are we gonna get there, folks?"
Uh, we're gonna just believe in a UFO, or we're gonna have a a, a rapture, an Israelite rapture, because that's what a lot of people are really describing in these days and times. Is that is there, there's going to be an Israelite rapture, just like the church, a pre-tribulation or mid-tribulation rapture. But at the end of the day, the movie the movie is just gonna you know kind of raise your eyebrows, make you kind of make you think. Um, and then hopefully you can do your own research and, and in fact check everything I say, uh, so that you don't just say I'm gonna take every I'm gonna take Ron's word for everything. No, just when you see the movie, do your own research, fact check everything, see if it makes sense, and and you decide what you want to believe, what you don't want to believe. And so the movie is is gonna be on the on the 18th, which I think is a Saturday. And um, in the movie, um, I'll be talking about some stuff about the Congo and some of the people from the Congo um, uh, will be in the movie. You'll see it uh, and you'll see what they have to say. Some of the stuff that, uh, that I've, been, I've been finding out since I've been here in South Africa, talking to the Congo people and, and um, you know, and, and talking to them, talking in the back and forth in French with the, with the Google Translate and, and or interpreter. All right. So, yeah. So yeah, Shonda, I'll give you the um the last part, of course, the thousand dollar question in regards to whether he you're gonna debate this guy or at least accept the challenge or not. I mean, I have my opinion. I haven't even asked Ron yet what, what he decided to that he's gonna do. I know Sean you said what, what your piece was last night. So uh so Ron, I, I, go ahead, you take the lead in that. Maybe I would like to see what your pie and Jay Lush concluded in regards to uh whether he should or not um but yeah shauna go ahead and take take control of that part so um yes i i, I clearly stated my position last <laughs> night um for, for one thing i feel that uh this particular person uh harold block um you know he he, he comes with an automatic bias um he comes with a bad reputation in his own community uh so for me, I feel like being that he's the instigator and he is the one who kind of pos you know positioned you in that in that light, that uh, he should also be a, a contender. But at the same time, uh, I want to know: Do you think that he was somebody with that you would even entertain? And if not, then uh, would you be open, as you stated earlier, you would, but make it clear for us that you would definitely be open to a debate or. You know, we're going to just pursue other means because I, I believe we need to move uh, legally as well uh, to start dealing with the slander and start dealing with the accusations of character defamation and such. So what are your thoughts about uh, the legalities, debate? How do you feel about that? You're muted. You're muted. Uh, Mr. Block, he's he's not really a contender. I mean, if he wants to debate me, he's just gonna be destroyed, um, and he's gonna be humiliated. Uh, he he may be he may be good at economics and other things, but <laughs> he's not he, he's not gonna debate me. Everybody knows that you know he's not gonna be the one to debate me uh, because that that would be he's he doesn't he doesn't represent the Jewish people uh, to where he's like considered a top. A scholar or a top rabbi that can that can do the job uh, of humiliating or, or showing people that I don't know what I'm talking about, and then you know I'm, he's gonna lose all his followers and all this stuff. No, he's not the one to do that. Uh, he he's probably trying to get some some rabbis or scholar to read the article and say, hey, he's right. We should debate this guy, but then who's gonna be the one to do it? Who's gonna take the challenge? Uh, because, like I said, I don't, I don't, I want, I, I want to debate their top scholar, their top rabbi, you know, uh, or anywhere in the world. Just, just go find him and get him. But they, they're not going to do it because they, they had a chance last year. They, they, they really wanted to debate me. They would have did it last year. They would have, they would have, you know, set it up last year, or they would have, they would have did something. But you know, as, as, as it stands, I think that they're scared to even interview me, let alone debate. Um, because even if they interview me, they're going to have to ask me certain questions um, in regards to the book and the movie and what the movie and the book talk about. And they don't they don't want people to hear the answers that I'm going to give them. Um, and then if they ask me a question, 
then now I have the opportunity to ask them a question and then put them on a hot seat. And if they don't want, if they don't want to answer the question, then it's gonna look like they're they're dodging the question, they're deflecting, they're they're running from um something because nobody likes to be asked tough, hard questions uh on on live tv because you know this is what i do I, I i ask tough hard questions all the time and people just get stumbled and they can't do it and they and they say well i know what you're trying to do and i'm not going to answer the question you know that's what they that's what pastors do jews do you know on clubhouse uh israelites do they'll say i, I just don't i know what you're trying to do i'm not going to answer the question <laughs> you know and i'll say man this is ridiculous then then and just then why are we even talking then? you know just we're not going to talk anymore because if I can't, if you can ask me questions and I ask you questions and you don't want to answer the questions, then we're not talking here. We're not having a discussion, which is the, which, which when you have two opposing opinions, it's a debate. A discussion turns into a debate when you have two opposing opinions on something. That's what a debate is. Uh, and, and it's, and it's not to sound like it's, it's like we're, we're, we're angry at each other or it's, it's, it's like a, a blood fight, a fight to the death. No, a, a discussion where it turns into, you believe this, I believe that. Now that kind of turns into a debate. And I think the Jews are they don't want to debate. They run from debates, even though I've been challenging them, challenging them to a debate. So well, like I said in, in the email to the Jews in the Post, I challenged Walter Block and any top Jewish rabbi uh or scholar to a debate. And and that's and, and I said specifically in the email, I want your top guy. Your top guy. Uh, I don't want a rinky dink rabbi. I don't want Somebody doesn't know nothing. Uh, I want somebody that is the top Jewish rabbi in the world or the top Jewish well-known scholar that you guys can muster up that will get in the ring with Ron Dalton and debate me. And and this this is not gonna be something where I'm gonna be nervous, I'm gonna be scared, I'm gonna have to I'm gonna have to do all this research because I've already done all the research. I'm not scared, I'm not nervous. I know, I know point blank. If we do if we do a debate, I'm just gonna cruise through the cruise through the debate. I'm going to win. I'm going to be like, this is, this is easy. <laughs> Y'all heard it here first, man. Yeah, you heard it like, I like David, boy, I tell you. <laughs> and, 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 and I have to say that, you know, with everything that was been, been described about the conference that's getting ready to take place, I think they might be a little bit scared of that as well. But y'all heard it here first. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, me, when I, when I, I was like, man, I don't think you should debate this because we don't have to validate ourselves to the people. Well, at first I was like, maybe we should actually. And then I watched the video by Ashonda and I'm like, man, this dude is kind of a mess. You know what I'm saying? Because I, I hadn't done my research on him yet. You know, Ashonda jumped on it and did a thorough job and seeing what kind of guy this is. And one hand, I'm like, do it just to just to like make him an example. But it appears that the Jews already made him a sacrificial swine, to be honest with you. I mean, they allow him to print that. So it sounds like he's just some sacrificial swine that they're throwing away. And so if they're willing to throw away one of their own like that, maybe it's not worth it. You know what I'm saying? Um, maybe we should just get the next valuable asset they have um, or the most valuable asset that they have. Um, so I would lean towards uh, we need somebody greater. Um, um, the top guy, you like know, you said, <laughs> you know, Judy, I me, mean, um, Lawrence, um, there's a, there's a Jewish filmmaker named Rudy Rockman, Rudy Rockman. And he was on, uh, remember that, that's the, what's that guy's name? Is his name Godfrey, the Nigerian guy? He's like a comedian. Godfrey. Godfrey. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So he, Godfrey interviewed him and another Jewish guy, um, Talking about the Kyrie incident, and he and Rudy Rockman was talking about Farrakhan and, and and how Farrakhan talks about the Jews, and they talked about the movie and the book and all that stuff. Rudy Rockman, I challenged him to a debate because he's a filmmaker and he he doesn't he does movies uh, about these things, and he blocked me on Facebook, I mean on Insta on Instagram um, because I kept trying to pin him down to a to a debate. Because he says that he said that he has a lot of they have a lot of work to do in Africa to reverse the teachings and beliefs that that I've been pushing uh, with Hebrew Negroes. So they they have to reverse the effect of Hebrew Negroes in America and Africa. And he said that he's going to do that with his movies and documentaries and his and his all his work that he's doing and being funded to go into Africa these in these countries to to teach them that we are all the twelve tribes. Um, we're brothers and sisters uh, of Jacob, and 
it just goes to show you that a lot of these guys they 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 know he proofs Negroes. They say it's anti-Semitic. They say that that they don't believe in anything I say and all sort of stuff. But at the end of the day, when it comes down to defending what you believe versus what you think, which what we what we believe that you don't believe is true, they don't want to do it. They don't want. They don't want to do it. Yeah, I think it's to the point where you know. I mean, this person is saying they got to reverse the damages you've done, which they consider damages, and we look at it as improvement. Um, and he's funded by these people. We need the same thing, Israel. Like, like we really got to get out of our head about money, man, for real. Like, this money don't really mean nothing, but the scriptures say it answers all things. It answered all things. We can't do this on our own. Ron just not going to be able to do this on his own. So we have to be able to help. Look, I'm not here saying, okay, give all what you got. I mean, because to be honest with you, like I, I go out and I buy, uh, I just bought two smoothies this morning. Cost me $17. It's inflate $17 at Tropical Cafe. So if I can go buy two smoothies, I could at least say, you know what? I ain't going to eat two smoothies today. Let me go ahead and donate that. But we do it all the time. We squander money all the time. We got to be honest with ourselves. But if this guy is going to amass all these millions, hundreds of millions possibly, to go and convert the people of Africa and do the undamped, what he said, the damage, I mean, we're doing a great job, but we need the help. We just can't do this on our own. I'm just going to be honest. And I, I can't even believe I'm here asking. I mean, we should be like, you know what I'm saying? We should see the proof and the work. The proof is, is that this this thing was, what well, you started working on a movie, Rob, 2015, 16, 17, got it done and it published on the 18th, 2018, it's been out there. So the proof is in the pudding that the work, the fruit is bearing fruit. I mean, the tree is bearing fruit. We see that. But it takes a lot of work, y'all. Like, it really does. All these flights and all these men, and then our body takes a beating. You see what I'm saying? And I know a lot of people see me, they, they see me fly here, fly. Bruh, that, that's not luxury. That stuff takes, uh, your body takes a beating. Every other week, you flying. It takes a beating. And we have to consistently try to eat right and exercise and try to keep our bodies in top shape just so we can do the work. It is not glamorous. And Jay, man, Jay Lush and, and your pot, real quick, one minute, tell them exactly how this thing feels. You're muted. Go ahead. Uh, It's... It's tiresome. <laughs> it, it's tiresome. It wears you out. Um, many times we uh we all get back to our to the home to our homes, and we 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 are done. We're tired. We're beat up. You know. Uh, you know. We we all praying for one another. Make sure we make it home safely. We're worried about flights sometimes, and we're going through terrified or turbulence sometimes. <laughs> man, it, it's just some some things, man, that be happening. Uh. You know, uh, it, it's for the good that we get to get out here and we get to speak with the people, man. Uh, like I said, I think last time we talked about it, Ron was on, uh, just the different people we get to meet, man, as we get out here. You know, people, non-Israelites are people who, who we believe they are, but they don't know who they are. You know, it's for good reason. Uh, it's very taxing, though. We talk to a lot of people in a short time period. And then not only that, you know, we were also doing things with Lawrence to help him with his mission with Ron. And so we're we're moving about a whole lot. It, it gas, you know, vehicles to make sure we're all straight, get in the hotels. Um, it costs a whole lot. Uh, so so money, uh, taxing on our bodies. It, it's very very draining. But you know, we we pray to worry not in doing good. That's right. And to make sure that we can get out here and get the message across, and so that Ron gets what he needs because he has a great work about him and we want to support our brother as best as we can. The work that he's doing and going back and forth, uh, uh, having to take care of his passport and having to take care of his family. The the, the big arc needs our support, man. And so uh, it's very taxing on him. I could, I know it. Listen, we just got to finish talking about the man has children. Man, we got to help feed him. We got to help him do what he needs to do so he can continue taking care of his family as well. So it's a lot. Yeah, they you when you look at um like Rudy Rockman, I think his movie is not done yet, but I think they 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 raised like five hundred thousand dollars, and 
uh, a lot of Tariq Na Nashi's movies, uh, when he does his Kickstarter and Indiegogo and different um, crowdfunding, um, he gets a lot of money uh, donated to do the Hidden Colors, the Hidden Colors movies, because um, a lot of people follow him and they are willing to donate uh, so that he can come out with another Hidden Colors movie. And it's not easy to fly uh, to Africa and to, to and to uh, to rent theaters for movie screenings uh, in America, and it costs thousands of dollars. And and you, then you got to market and advertise it, and hope the people come out and they don't complain and say, "Well, I got to pay thirty dollars for a ticket." Why well, I got to pay forty dollars for a ticket? You know, when it comes out uh, on uh, on Amazon or H two N TV, I'm just gonna bootleg it, put it on Facebook, and I'm gonna put it on YouTube, and we're gonna do a a watch party, or we're gonna show it at a theater and charge people to come in, and we're just gonna rent it nine ninety nine and charge people to come in fifty forty thirty dollars to come in and sit down for a movie. I just rented nine dollars, and I got three hundred Israelites Israelites in here that just paid me nine dollars to watch it, and I paid nine dollars to show it you know, on the, on the big screen, you know, or at, at the church or at a hall. And this is what we do as Israelites. We, you know, we, we, we are quick to say, well, I, I, why, why are you selling the truth, Brother Ron? Why are you selling this movie? It should be for free. Why are you selling your 700-page book? Uh, it should be for free on Amazon. But then you ask them, did you pay for Babylon 2.2? And they say, I did pay for that. Did you pay for Hebrews of West Africa? Yeah, I paid for that too. Did you pay for the Sefer Bible? Oh, yeah, I paid for that too. Did you pay for the Hallelujah Scripture? Oh, yeah, I did pay for that. Did you pay for your Bible? Oh, yeah, I paid for that too. Did you pay to watch uh, this Netflix series that you watch you watch today? Yeah, I paid for Netflix every month. You know, but then when they when you ask them, uh, come out to the movie and they say, what's the ticket price? And you say $30. They say, oh, man, I mean, that's a lot, right? Like, or, or you even say $40. They say, man, that's a lot of money. You know, but see, the thing is, they got to understand that that I'm not a huge production company. I don't have LeBron Studios and Oprah Studios and these studio companies that are working with hundreds of thousands of dollars, you know, million dollar budgets. No, huh? you millions. Know, and they, millions. Yeah. Yeah. And then, and then when they when they drop it, they're, they're getting major distribution. They're getting major dis distribution so that they can recoup the money. Hebrew Sneagles not going to give major distribution <laughs> on Amazon. Don't expect Hebrew Sneagles to be on Amazon like Hebrew Sneagles 3. It's not going to be on Amazon. You know, you're going to see it on, on H2N TV or Hebrew Sneagles TV, and that's it. But who but who in the Israelite community is telling their assemblies and followers, hey, Ron has H2N TV. Ron has Hebrew Sneagles TV uh, uh, Sign up, subscribe, watch his content. They're not telling people that. You know, because we don't do that as Israelites. We don't support one another. We don't cross promote one another. You know, so this is the reason why you have a lot of Israelite artists that are trying to get out there to be well known in the Israelite community. And, you know, you're wondering, OK, uh, next, like like Lawrence, he said, hey, you ever heard this guy? And I said, no, I never heard of him. And he was like, what? You didn't hear him? I said, no, I didn't hear of him. You know, so there's people. In, in Detroit, that they, they have never heard of, of certain Israelite rappers and singers. They, the, they, that doesn't mean that they're not they're not good. It's just that they don't we don't cross promote. So then at the end of the day, we don't know about certain things until you know you hear it. Just like in South in South Africa, you know when I when I played Lawrence uh, music in South Africa, I think I played John Bidden, and the South Africans they they liked it. You're like, what's this move? Where, where can I get this from? And I and I think. Um, I was in, oh, I was in, uh, in, in South Africa and uh, I went over to her sister's house and she was playing your pa's video. And I said, what you know about your pa? And they were like, oh, I love her. I said, I love her. I love her. I love her music. And I said, well, I, I know her too. I can call fire. her. Your pa is <laughs> fire. For, all, of, yeah, for all, all the people who are not familiar with this sister right here, I'm telling you. She is absolute fire. She is anointed for this. I just have to throw that out there. So. Yeah, so I was like, I was like, I was like, I know your pie. And I showed her my I phone. And I said, this is, this, this is her number right here. You know, when I had a I had a uh, a gathering in my house, and one of the sisters was was listening to Lorvitz. And I said, you, who is this? And she said, Oh, that's Lorvitz. He's a he's a he's a Hebrew rapper, singer. He's great. He, you should listen to him. She said, I know Lorvitz. I said, I know Lorvitz. Like she was like, Really? I said, his his song is in my movie. And she was like, Oh, really? And I said, Yeah. And I called Lorvitz. And put him on speaker. And I said, "This is the guy you listen to right now, Lorvis." <laughs> and she was like, "Oh wow, you know Lorvis?" I said, "Yeah, I know Lorvis." So people, 
that we don't think that listen to Lorvins and your pa, they they do, but it's a lot of Israelites that don't know about Lorvins, you know, or your pa that need to see their work. And 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 it's not easy, like Jay Lutz said, the stuff that you gotta do to stay relevant in America, um, flying to different states and performing at different assemblies and all these different things. Yeah, that's, that's not easy. You know, I, I can tell, I can say for, for myself that it's not easy. And the Hebrews to Negro Street movie, um, it, it didn't make it so. You know, I had to pay for a lot of the, I pay, basically I paid for everything uh, to make the movie. So it's the reality. It's the reality. Yeah. So the reality of it is, is that it takes finance to do anything. You see what I'm saying? And I'm sure, Shonda, you you have to live. And <laughs> Jay Lutch, he has to live. Your pa has to live. Your pa, your I pa got more children than Brother Ron. So, yeah. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? And, and, I'm, and I'm not saying this because, yeah, you know, yeah, you know, they're asking for money. So what? If you don't like it, it is what it is. But the thing about it is, and I, we're not saying this in a sense where being dissens not sensitive towards your situation because everybody has a situation. But the idea is, is that you if, if the work move you, then bless it. You see what I'm saying? Ron, what are ways they can actually donate to you um, do you have like a cash app or do you have like a PayPal or on your website? Is there a donation button and where people can actually donate or even that to do better? There's the event in November. Come support that. You yes. should buy a ticket or even if you're not going buy a ticket and donate to somebody else. You see what I'm saying? Especially somebody in Florida. That's one way because, you know, it's going towards something. You see what I'm saying? But at least do that. So, Ron, what ways they can actually donate? And I'll have your pop put it on there. And just believe it or not, look, I help out Ron in a lot what he does. And believe me, I'll make sure it happens. So. Yeah, I'm mute. yeah so I still have uh, Cash App. They haven't shut that down yet. It's uh, Hebrews, the number two, and then Negroes, N-E-G-R-O-E-S. So Hebrew, just like the book, but except for T-O, it's the number two uh, at the Hebrews and then Negroes. And then um, I have a uh, Zelle. You, you just, you can just basically use uh, Hebrews to Negroes at yahoo.com as the email address for Zelle. Yeah, do Hebrews like a, to, like slow it down. So Hebrews to Negroes. To Negroes uh, at yahoo.com. Because usually Zelle, you can use a phone number or email and you can use the email for Zelle and I just gave you cash up. Uh, GoFundMe has been taken down. So those are the two ways, at least right now, you can donate. Yeah. And the reason why I'm doing this, uh, family, is because they're trying to cut off all his earnings in the way he earns. You see what I'm saying? And it's having an effect. You see what I'm saying? But the idea is we can't let one of our own, who's actually a champion, who's willing to offer himself up like David, and we can't, we just can't let it fall. You see what I'm saying? This work has to continue. And mm -hmm. and, and and let the most I move you in that. You know what I'm saying? And if, and if you if you can't, don't do it now if it's going to put you in a situation. Please do not. Because we want nobody in a situation. Because it's not Christianity. But if you're moved, please help out. You see what I'm saying? And, and I pray that the most I can bless all of you who actually take that leap of faith and offering something. Um, for the good of the, um, the the awakening, so that the most high thing could be magnified as much as we can, and allowing him to use us to do it. So, uh, thank you so much for that in advance. Ron, Ron, was that right? What I had on the screen? Put it again. Um, yeah. You know, That's I, right. I am I am so deeply encouraged by so much that I heard uh, tonight, especially. Uh, when we segued into what you're doing with the movie premiere um, family, if y'all get a chance to go out there and see that premiere, then please, please do. Because, you know, so many of the, the, the points that you made up, especially about the quote unquote indigenous Israelites, um, that's a hot button issue among many of us and understanding the routes that were taken to get us in the Americas versus us being already in the land. I think that's very paramount to uh, understanding a deeper part of our identity. So please, if y'all get a chance to support the work, yes, through Cash App, yes, through Zelle, but also show your face, show your face, make a, a um, make a, a, a your presence known 
right? Because that in itself is a major encouragement. So mm -hmm. I just wanted to put that out there. Okay, yeah. And so, and I'm going to segue to this. When we have a single mother, right? And the, the scripture talks about taking care of the people, um, the children and things of that nature. At any moment we have that opportunity, we have to do that as well. Look, your pa has been like one of the ones that's just been like riding with us. You see what I'm saying? Like, and, and she's a single mother with five kids, right? I hate to put your business out, but it is what it is, right? They're a gift. I met them. They're sweet. So the mm -hmm. idea, and she's a single woman, please. And if y'all are led to help her as well, please do that. And I'm only saying that because of I'm on the inside. And, and sometimes things can be a struggle for all of us. But I don't need anything. You see what I'm saying? Although I need all the money in the world, I don't ask for myself because the most High has always been able to provide for me. He's always been able to, like, um, make sure all the works get done. Do I need more? Yes. But I'm not going to complain about it because I'm grateful for what he's done for me as it is already. You see what I'm saying? And the things he's already can do. And any donation you would have want to give to me, give it to her. You see what I'm saying? I want to make sure that because she is a single woman and she has children, she can continue to do the work. You see what I'm saying? In a way that it's not stressed. It's in a way where it's not, you feel like, where is the money going to come from? You see what I'm saying? Because in, in this nation, in the way that they do things, it can hurt somebody like that. Um, so I pray that, you know, he laid it on all of your hearts to really help her in any way that you can. All right. And your pa, I know you, you're such a cry baby <laughs> in the way. And, and she's the kind of person, even if she needs help, she's not going to ask. She'd rather just go through it. You see what I'm saying? And I always tell her, hey, you know, closed mouth don't get fed. So I'll ask for you. You see what I'm saying? So um, what is your cash app? What is your Zelle? And I'm going to use my platform to do good. You know, and any chance I can get to do my platform to do good, that's what I'm going to do. And so, please, if you can make a sacrificial donation to her, that would be great. And, Yapa, what is your 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 information? Please type it in. Okay. And in the meantime, while you do that, since you got any last word you want to say in regards to, you know, anything you may have not covered? Now, I, I just want to say that this has truly been an honor. It's been a pleasure of mine. Um, I'm so grateful and humbled that uh, you allowed me to come on the platform to be your co-host um, and alongside this excellent panel. Um, we've met each other once before, but I pray that it won't. this won't be uh, uh, something that we're not keeping up communication because um, I really love the spirit that you all bring. Um, I want to thank Brother Ron so much for uh, just coming on and, and making clear uh, where he stands and uh, just continuing to do the work and to labor among uh, the kingdom, labor among the people, because we know that the harvest is plenty, but the workers are few. So um, just thank you all again for having me on and thank, thank everybody uh, who came over from my platform to show some love to uh, both Brother Lorvins as well as Brother Ron and uh, appreciate all of you, love you all. And um, yeah, that's it. All right, uh, Ron, you got anything you wanna say? Um... Where's, oh, okay, I think. Oh, no, no, I'm, I'm okay, I'm good. It's late over here. <laughs> okay, all right, Jay Lutz. Uh, man, uh, most definitely, uh, I implore y'all to, to support the people on this platform. Uh, I noticed you didn't give out the Shonda at large's information. You might need to give out that sister's information as well. Oh, she uh, didn't, I, I, didn't do I, it? I went, I went I deep on her YouTube it. channel. That sister's doing the great work as well. So, yeah. uh, we appreciate all the work that you're doing as well, sis. Please continue doing all that you're doing. Uh, we appreciate you. Uh, we need every bit of, we need every foot soldier on the field that can put the work out. So you most definitely appreciate it, sis. Thank um, you. Thank absolutely. You so um, and anybody else, man, uh, that, that y'all see that you could support in and throughout this community that's doing the work, man, please do so, man. Uh, it, it really is needed. I'm in a great position myself. I am doing great. 
I'm kind of in lower position where I really don't need to ask for much. Uh, and I'm working to get other air sources of income going. So I'm fine. Please help my sister out with your PAW Q. She most definitely could use y'all help, man. Uh, and, and just love on my sister, man. Because we going to love on her from here. <laughs> so, you know, uh, do 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 what y'all do, family. Uh, love y'all, man. I, I appreciate being a part of the family and part of the panel. All praises to the most high. And your pocket, you have any last uncomfortable words you want to say? I'll just message. Like it's just all in the background. <laughs> Anything you want to say? Um, you know what? This was this was a beautiful, another beautiful show here. Um, all praise to the most high and the work. Um Ronald Dalton, you know, please support the brother. Um, please support him in the work. Um, we was reading the scripture earlier, uh, first Samuel, it, it was before, before Saul agreed, he was like, oh, you ain't able to do this. And I think that's what we, we discourage our people doing great things before we encourage them. So we may need to turn that around. So, because we are a people that do not support, we don't even support our children besides basketball and football and stuff like that. So we need to be a supportive people from the get go. You know what I'm saying? All, all the, the hate and stuff, we have to filter that out of our spirits and stuff like that. So um, beautiful work, uh, Ron. And I, and I pray the most I protect you in your household. Miss um, Ashonda at large, I haven't caught many of your shows, but man, you on fire, sis. All praise to the Most High for you. You are definitely an example uh, to older and younger women. She 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 has babies. She got a husband, and they got children with a with an SSS. You know what I'm saying? So it made me look at my file like, oh man, like <laughs> this this easy work. This light work. This light work. Um, all praises to the Most High for you and your kind words earlier. I never expect for people to say what they say, and um, <clears throat> it's a <laughs> it, it's beautiful. <laughs> it is it's beautiful. It's onions, High. onions. That's yeah, all. Yeah, yeah, just just a little, a little purple onion. You know what I'm talking about? <laughs> uh, <laughs> and um, you know what? Um, as of lately, I've, I've been working on obedience. You know, so it's it's just been. Uh, June is over, but July seems like it's starting out just is <laughs> just as heavy as June ended. Like, <laughs> well, all praise to the Most High for that. Um, Luchi, you know you're my brother. These are my folk. You know what I'm saying, Lawrence. You know this. I don't know why he did what he did, but I ain't gonna go against it because the last time I went against it. I was stuck at a <laughs> gas station <laughs> and my engine <laughs> was on the. <laughs> hey, go ahead. Hey, you know what? While you at it, go ahead and tell them. Go ahead and tell them. You, Yo, um, <laughs> you know, I, I have these moments, you know what I'm saying? I, I have these, these moments where I got to get my spirit in check. So, um, as we all do, you know, and I was so adamant about what I felt, you know, that I was going to do, how I was going to do it, and the way that I was going to do it, that it was nobody's going to tell me nothing. You weren't going to stop me. I was going to go to the wilderness, and I was getting there, and I was I was about to bounce, you know. And um, Alorvis and Lush, they didn't understand. It was like, well, okay, you know, you're not going to show up. Like, okay, like, we'll see you, sis. You know, we talk every day. If we don't talk every day, it's rare, you know, it's rare for us not to talk every day. So it was like, well, uh, hey, you know, and I was trying to get away from these cats. I'm like, I gotta go deal with myself. So I was so adamant. I was about to get on the road. I was in Dallas, come back to the sip, get country, get in the dark and pray, really. And in my little, I guess I had a neck roll on getting my spirits together. You know what I'm saying? I, yeah, I went to the gas station. This never happened to me before. Like normally, I crank up the car, I'm gone. I'm bound. I need a CDL for the type of driver that I do. When I tell you, 
my car. <laughs> Y'all, my car was, I was like, what in the world? Like, I could, I was, it's like I was in neutral in drive. I'm like, what in the world? It oh, was the God. craziest thing. And how I left, I left the people that I ended up back with later on in the day. And uh, I was like, well, like, <laughs> you know, this was a great lesson. You know what I'm saying? It was just it, nothing it that happened like that. Experience. And Jayla, you tell exactly how it happened because she right what? Here, the, the, the What did you say about the angel? <laughs> oh, pop the bell. <laughs> oh, the, oh, the bell. <laughs> the bell. You know, you know the bell uh, in the vehicle, you know, uh, it usually when it, when it, it pops off, when it pops. But it didn't pop off. The bell just it just came out. Something, <laughs> something happened with the pulley. It, it, it fell down, and so the belt came off. And you never, you never really see anything like that. So I, I thought. So I told her, like, man, the angel was like, man, give me that belt. I'm gonna whoop, I'm gonna whoop you with this belt. You trying to leave my? <laughs> you trying to leave them brothers? <laughs> I'm gonna whoop you with this belt. <laughs> uh, nah, seriously, nah. it was it was really like a. I, at that moment, I was like, "Oh man, I I can't cross them for real. Like, I can't." <laughs> you know, I was like, "I better be careful uh, how I move with them because, <laughs> hey, it was hot, you know." <laughs> <laughs> and what happened? Like, I don't care what you listen. Y'all sisters could be anti-black men all you want to. I never seen black men move so fast. You know what I'm saying? Lunch came. Laura's like, "Go get a." My dad came. Then we rode around the block. We in the country hood. Then it was three brothers looking at my car. My 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 uh, my other cousin came, and I seen six seven men move on my behalf in a matter of one hour. So shout out to the brothers! Like, shout out to the brothers! <laughs> shout out to the brothers! <laughs> you know, and it was it was it was um it was amazing. I. I learned a lot. I could just say that. And um, and for those, I see this cash app thing going. <laughs> and um, man, made a my granny used to say, may the may God bless you a hundredfold. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and I mean that, you know, I do a lot of stuff in the uh the background that I would never tell people. And um sometimes if I got five, they can have 450, and I got five kids, and I do that. So Man, yeah, I'm gonna I'm a fade out, you know what I'm saying? Like, I'm gonna fade out, you know what I'm saying? Like, I'll praise to the, the I'll praise to the heavenly father, all the glory and honor to him, and that's all I got to say, you know. Your power from one mother to another. I could tell you that I know your heart is to serve others all the time. But one of the lessons that I'm learning is that if you're not taken care of, if you're not healthy spiritually, emotionally, psychologically, mentally, that you can't serve them with the spirit of excellence. So don't put yourself on the back burner ever again. See, because I'm going to take care of myself. I may not be able to do all the things I like to do, but I'm going to take a minute out to myself in prayer and reading Yah's word and self-care. And it's important because I want to be around for my children. And I know with five, you got half that I have, right? But we are trying to, at the same time, break generational curses off of them. We can't break them generational curses off of them if we're unhealthy. So my, my, my. I want to encourage you to know that the Most High said that you would love him with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength, and your neighbor, what? As yourself. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, right. You got to love you, boo. You gotta yeah, I love you too. <laughs> I feel that you know I, I've I've done a not a, a lot of neglecting of myself for people, and maybe that's the mirror that I want. And and it seemed like I, man, listen, we give me your number. We go. Yeah, we gonna talk. We gonna talk. You know, <laughs> you know I'll praise the most I for y'all because I don't have many sisters to call up on. So. Uh, Nettie, you know what I'm saying? You <laughs> Maki Dada, you know. <laughs> oh, praises. Thank you. Thank you, sister. I appreciate you. Yeah. So, man, I appreciate all of you for coming on. 
Hey, you step in my realm, you step in my world, it's about taking care of one another. Um, and we're going to do it through love because love covers a multitude of sin. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I know a lot of us ain't perfect. Mm -hmm. It's crazy because I tend to gravitate towards people who are more hurting than people who already got it together. Because the way I look at it, if you already got it together, you really don't need me. Now, we can we can converse and then I can be an encouragement. You can be an encouragement to me. But at the end of the day, we're supposed to go out and we're supposed to heal the sick. And we're supposed to go ahead and feed the children and the widows and visit the people in prison and things. That's the mission. That's the gospel, right? That's the mission in Isaiah. So we have to take care of one another. You round me, that's what you're going to see. Now, I'm not saying that we don't hold each other accountable. We certainly do. Believe that. You know what I'm saying? We don't. But we also understand that a lot of us are going through a lot, a lot of hurt. And a lot of undoing of what was done to us in the past. So that means we have to be patient with one another. You see what I'm saying? Even if I don't, I'm not perfect. I don't always get it right. And trust me, I have habits that I've done over and over. But the scriptures are 70 times seven. 70 times seven, seven. Right? So we have to be able to do that for one another, for one another. And then sometimes that person straight away, and they may have to go. But you still have to leave room for them to be able to return, hence the prodigal son. So we need to make sure that we take care of one another through love. And with that said, Jay Lutch. <laughs> Man, listen, I want a sign to do it because she just did it. Come oh. on, get, get, let, let a sign to do it, man, because she just did it. Well, Sandra, please, please, we always do this every time we go out. Give them the greatest two commandments. Okay, well, hallelujah. Um, the greatest two commandments, which encompasses all 10. We are to love Yahuwah, our Elohim, with all our heart, mind, soul, and strength, and our neighbor as ourselves. So, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hey. All right. Hey, give them some music or something. <laughs> oh, yeah. Man, I pray that the Most High shine his countenance on all of you. Thank you so much for coming through. Make sure y'all heed the word and all the teachings that Ron is doing. And we're Ron, we appreciate you for coming on. And I shout out. I'm so sorry we get ca caught up in the moment because you and I feel like we've been talking all day. But uh, thank you so much for gracing this platform. You've really added value to it. And uh, we might have to think about bringing you as a co-host co co sometimes. You know what I'm saying? You did a wonderful job. And uh, please support uh, um, Ashana and everything that she's doing. Support your pa, Q, and her music. And Jay Lutch, man, that's my brother, y'all. Please don't forget about my brother. And his music is excellent. You Google Jay Lutch. Subscribe to their YouTube channel, you know what I'm saying? Because they got a lot to offer. And they got a lot coming out later on that we really plan on working on some things. So, And we're trying to do it in the spirit of excellence. So, man, praise Yahuwah for all of you through his son, Yahusha. And y'all stay encouraged and be encouraged, and we're gonna enjoy this thing until the end. Shalom. Shalom. Hey, hey, hey Asanda, when you come on the hook co-host, this is off limits, sis. Bring bring your bring your bring your gloves. Sometimes, <laughs> sometimes right. they, be, they be trying to ready to come with, come at us, sis. You gotta be ready to go, sis. I'm ready. ready. It's on, man. I love to. <laughs> love y'all. Love y'all. Oh, crazy. <laughs> shalom, shalom, y'all. <laughs> The African Israelite Justice Foundation is not your usual legal practice. You see, we focus primarily on cases involving injustice against African Israelite groups or injustice against individuals because he or she identifies as an African Israelite or an Israelite of African descent. In other words, we are not a general legal practice. Instead, we specialize on African Israelite cases. And also family, please keep in mind, we are a brand new organization, not affiliated with any existing organizations. However, it is our hope to establish connections with all African Israelite groups and people here in the States and around the world. Family, we need to hear your stories of injustice so that we can begin to record, investigate, and identify the enemies of Israel hiding behind the veil, and then ultimately hold them accountable 
in a court of law. Please also keep in mind, we are a brand new organization with limited funds, and we are in the process of expanding our resources to further enhance our legal team who will litigate our cases. And if you would like to join this historic cause, please share this message all over social media. Spread this message of IsraeliteJustice.org worldwide and get this message from Kyrie to Kanye, from Whoopi Goldberg to Nick Cannon, and also share your stories of injustice or donate to the cause. And if you so choose to, you can remain anonymous and let us do all the work. After all, that's what the Israelite Justice Foundation is here for. We are here to fight for your right to be Israel. As always, thank you in advance. We appreciate you and love you, Israel. Take care, family. Shalom. Separate the weed from the test From glory to glory